Three, two, one, ready or not, here I come. Don't hide, cause I love the chase. I'm ready for action. <laughs> this should be fun. The playoffs are at full swing. Checkered flag, Ty Majeski gets the win at IRP. This is just the start of our playoff run. Awesome job. I'm not losing today. Today, the trucks turn back the clock and revisit an old stomping ground where series veterans can't bank on a win. With only two chances left to advance, it's go time on the mile. Try and bring me pain. Everyone has a chance, but only one will be the winner. He's driving like he's the first one out. It's time to light the fire. This is race day from Milwaukee. If that doesn't get you fired up for Milwaukee, I don't know what will. Welcome into Race Day. I'm Caitlin Vinci alongside David Reagan and Todd Bodine. Great to see the two of you as always. It's the second playoff race, and it's at a track we haven't been to in a very long time. How much are you looking forward to this one? I wish I was there racing. I this bet is, you do. This is one of the most fun race tracks I can remember racing on, but it's a tough track. You know, long sweeping corners, center of the corner speed is critical, keeping that momentum. You know, I went there in 05 <laughs> to, for a test with this young guy. You mm. know, it's tough on young drivers. I went there yeah. with this young guy, great young driver, fifth lap on the track. He drove her right in the wall and testing. He was testing. Who was that guy? <laughs> what, what were you Sorry. thinking, David? Yeah, well, we yeah. knew that was coming. I, I couldn't yeah, warn yeah. you, though. That, that was me. So that Sorry, was my buddy. first memory of going to uh, to Milwaukee. Todd was there. I was, I was the coach. I, I got on the throttle so early. And like you said, Todd, those corners yeah. are so wide. And I just thought they went on forever. But I did kiss the wall <laughs> ever so slightly. But A little but, more than a kiss. Yeah, Todd was trying to coach me up. If only I would have listened to to him back in the day, but the, the trucks are the main event. It's their race number two in the playoffs. There's a lot of guys with a lot of pressure on them, and, and this is a lot of fun to see the truck series back at Milwaukee. Aren't you glad you have him to remind you of mistakes? And, and he's still he's coaching still me right still now. Coaching. I just, I just <laughs> need to listen. I just yeah. need to listen. Hey, you guys reference it, though. Second race of the playoffs. IRP was the first race of the postseason where we saw a dominant performance by Mr. Ty Majeski. 179 laps he led on the way to his third career win other drivers obviously having some misfortunes throughout the course of this race as you can see plenty of activity on the track but for Ty Majeski what a great finish for him a great way to start his postseason as well here is the playoffs leaderboard the round of 10 one of three Ty at the top Matt Craft and Matt Benedetto. they are the two drivers who are currently below the cut line going into this race but it was a very busy evening out at Daytona International Speedway for the Cup Series race just yesterday evening we we want to bring you back to one of the events that happened in the course of that race involving the 41 of Ryan Priest got a push from the 43 of Eric Jones came down on the 14 of Chase Briscoe the 41 goes airborne flips 10 times guys what were you thinking when you saw this happening I, I was thinking when's it gonna stop I mean Caitlin it just looked like a little matchbox car out there being tossed in the backyard Todd that that is a violent uh, wreck when, when a driver gets turned and starts rolling at, at 200 miles an hour yeah th this is definitely one of the most violent wrecks I've seen in a long time but you know if there's any good in this wreck is two things first of all he was in the grass so it was a little softer landing mm -hmm. but he didn't hit anything solid there was no sudden stops as a driver that's what you worry about those sudden stops really hurt and can hurt you fortunately Ryan was it was okay yeah Ryan and Priest, we see him there being taken to the Halifax Medical Center where he was treated and released this morning. He did post a tweet as well. Take a look at this. He said, if you want to be a race car driver, you better be tough. We had a fast forward performance Mustang and I am coming back. So it is a great thing to see that Ryan has been released and that he seems okay. But what a scary incident for a driver to, to deal with and manage. Yeah, and Ryan was racing up front for most of the night and he was in a must win situation. So you know he was being very, very aggressive and all those drivers at the end of the races are just super aggressive at these style racetracks and, and anytime you get turned sideways and you start rolling and spinning through uh, through the grass back there Todd it, it, it's an uncomfortable position but Ryan is a tough driver he, he's he's an old school style driver and I know he'll bounce back when, whenever he, uh, he, he <laughs> literally bounce around. back that's right yeah you know the one thing as a driver you, you're trying to eliminate your mistakes right you don't want anything to take yourself out of the race well that that wasn't his mistake you know and that's the, the shame of it taken out of a race because of somebody else's mistake. Again, so grateful to know that Ryan Priest is okay and that he has been released from the hospital as well. Now, Chris Busher, guys, he is the other part of the big story. He was able to survive all the melee and treacherousness out there in Daytona. Got his third win of the season.
his first at Daytona, and his fifth career win. What an incredible year RFK Racing has had. So much momentum guiding them into the postseason. You see the congratulatory comments there from Brad Kozlowski. Here is the 16. The drivers were making a run for the Cup Series title. Bubba Wallace, he made it in on points. Martin Truex Jr., though, he is your regular season champion. And speaking of the Cup Series, guys, Kurt Busch, he did make an announcement yesterday that he is retiring from full-time racing in the Cup Series. And, of course, he won out at Milwaukee back in 2000. He led 156 laps on the way to that win. He actually had four career wins uh, in the Truck Series, but a lot of victories, a lot of accolades along the way in the other series within NASCAR. So Kurt Busch no longer going to be racing full-time, but what an incredible career that this racer has had over the course of the years. Take a look at the Kurt Walker. 834 starts across NASCAR's top three series. You see the wins there for Truck and Xfinity. Most notable, 34 wins in the Cup Series. He was a champion back in 2004. He's won crown jewel races. And you've raced against him for many years alongside him. And, and what stands out to you about what he's done? Yeah, I think Kurt was one of the most talented drivers with just the pure raw talent to sit down in a race car. Right? You knew that he always could get that extra little bit of speed out of a race car. And he was so methodical on how he broke down the race car. He could always make his team better, his crew chief better, and he drove for a lot of different teams and manufacturers over the years, and he won in a lot of those situations. Todd, in his 23 years in the Cup Series, he won an incredible 19 years uh, with at least one win. So that, that just speaks of, of the, uh, uh, the the longevity that he mm -hmm. had uh, in the career and, and a, a lot to be proud of. Absolutely. You know, the, the two things that car owners look for in a race car driver, first you want a guy that can go fast and win races, right? That's that's the most important thing. The second thing is you want him to not tear up your equipment. You want him to, to learn, get to the end of the races, not tearing up your equipment. That that was Kurt Busch's career right there. He he always was up front running for wins, for the championships. And the best thing is if if he was going to have an eighth place car, he was going to finish eighth. He wasn't going to tear it up trying to get to fifth. And for Kurt, it paid off dividends down in his career in getting all the top tens and all those wins. Yeah, Kurt Bush definitely has had a Hall of Fame worthy career. It's been a lot of fun to watch his career over the years. So I want to talk back to trucks. That's what's happening today at the Milwaukee Mile. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the trucks today. Grant Enfinger sits on the pole for the first time since 2019. All of his poles have come at different racetracks. And alongside of Grant is Nick Sanchez. It's his sixth front row start of 2023 for the rookie. Row two sees Carson Hostovar and Taylor Gray with a career best start. Row three, Daniel Dye also making his best ever start in the truck. And Christian Eckes is there, who we're going to hear from later in the show. Row four is Chase Purdy and the regular season champ of Corey Heim. But now it is time to go out to Wisconsin, the Milwaukee Mile, and say hello to our pit reporter, Josh Sims. I know you've been busy, but there's some news already coming down the line earlier today about Ty Majeski and the team. What is going on with them? Yeah, Caitlin, not the homecoming start that Ty Majeski would like. The 98 team failed inspection three times due to a right rear valve stem issue. As a result, crew chief Joe Shear Jr. was ejected. The team will lose a right rear tire for the race. They will start from the back of the field, and they'll also have to serve a pit lane penalty, a drive through penalty at the start of the race. I talked to Ty earlier before qualifying. He said, hey, this is the situation we're in. We got to do what we got to do. We'll see the way Ty has been racing. We'll see if this is a affects him or not either way he already has that win so he's through to the next round now coming up in just a little bit I'm going to catch up with two of his teammates and Ben Rhodes and Matt Crafton as well as Corey Heim to talk about their chances for today Caitlin thank you Josh great insight there we look forward to checking in with you throughout the course of the show but this is definitely not how Ty would like his weekend to start especially given how great IRP went <laughs> yeah he, he's had a couple of great weeks uh, but it's going to be fun for us to watch him uh, Dyson through the field uh, you know I think the biggest thing to take away here is he's had so much speed the last couple of weeks and, and he was a favorite going into this weekend Absolutely. I still think he's going to be a contender at the end of this race but what he's going to have to have he's going to have to have some timely cautions to be able to get that track position back to the front. I think the biggest thing what Josh reported on is that drive through penalty at the start of the race. Normally, if you start at the back, you can start picking off some race cars pretty quick, but he's going to have to take that long road down it's, pit road, Todd, and, and, he, and he's going to be by himself. He's going to have to catch a caution early on to be able to start passing some yeah. trucks. So, Ty Majeski, one of the drivers who's already won in the postseason, Matt Benedetto, opposite, the opposite side of the <laughs> spectrum, below the cut line. What do you think for him today? Well, I tell you what, I texted with Chad 
Kendrick, Matt's crew chief this morning, and Chad said they just really got loose qualifying. They're starting 30, 23rd, uh, but they really feel like they got a fast truck for the race. It was good in practice. You know, and, and Chad's done such a great job with these setups and getting Matt comfortable in fast trucks every week. And I, I think that they're on, on the uphill run here and a little bit of luck, and they might make it into the next round. All right, we'll have to see if Matt Benedetto can make his way above the cut line after today. We're just getting started just ahead here on race day. We break down the potential for Grant Enfinger to get a win today. And who is rookie Nick Sanchez? We will get to know driver two coming up, plus Christian Eckes. He's off to a good start in the playoffs. We will hear from him about the long journey to get to this point. That's coming up next. Tonight, the NFL is back on Fox. Bring that dog out. Got to love it. It all starts as rookie QB C.J. Stroud looks to make his mark. My goodness. And ignite a new era in Houston. Incredible. Now, he leads the Texans into a preseason showdown against the newly minted Derek Carr and the Saints. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown. Preseason football tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Welcome back to Race Day from the Milwaukee Mile. To look at the 43 truck at Daniel Dye. He starts fifth. That is his career best start so far in the truck series. What about the 23 at Grand Enfinger? His day is so far so good. He is starting on the pole. His last pole was out at Kentucky way back in July of 2000. 19. But these two drivers in a unique situation because it was announced recently that GMS Racing will no longer be racing full time in the truck series. They've been a part of the series for a long time. And I know you spoke with Grant earlier. How is he feeling about all this? Yeah, you know, I talked to Grant this morning. You know, he's he's got some other things happening. He's talking to some teams, trying to figure out his future in the sport, what he might do. But his main concern, believe it or not, is not his future. It's right now. He feels like he's got a championship team. He can go out and get this done. Crew Chief Jeff Hensley's doing a great job. GMS built him a new truck for this race, so he feels like this is his best opportunity to get a championship and basically show what he can do behind the wheel, which we all know how good he is, but his future is still in doubt. In these next six races, Todd, that, that will only help him next yeah, year absolutely. as a little bit of a bargaining tool if he can go out and say, hey, yeah, I won the championship last right. year. He's already got a couple of wins on the season. But, yeah, Grant is a championship caliber driver on and off the racetrack, and he would really be good for any race team. And then Raja Karuth, uh, Daniel Dye, uh, I know that they're already working on things for next year. So it's good that they know early enough uh, so they can start working on some of these things. But we got to give an attaboy to the GMS team. I mean, they have made a huge huge uh, splash in the uh, truck series, uh, the Arkham Menard series, and all these uh, different championships and wins. Uh, they, they've, they've given a lot of drivers opportunities to grow and, and learn in their careers. Yeah, and it, it all started because <laughs> Spencer Gallagher, yeah. Mr. Gallagher's son, wanted to race a truck. That's how it all started at GMS. Yeah. Yeah. GMS has certainly made a lot of contributions to the truck series. We'll miss seeing them running yeah. full-time, of course, here in the series. And you guys were talking about Grant Enfinger. He's been busy today running double duty in the Arkham Menard series along with all of these other drivers. Grant ended up fifth on the day. Uh, William Sawalich, good for him, getting the big victory. So those drivers, obviously, are, are busy, and Grant Enfinger being one of them. But rookie Nick Sanders. Sanchez, he made the playoffs. He will start second. Nick is a former champion in the Arkham Menard Series. Point, point to that trophy Here saying, hey, maybe I can get it done in the truck series as well. And the rookie has turned a lot of heads in the series this season, but who is he really? Some of the answers may surprise you. Here is a get to know you with Nick Sanchez. This is get to know you with Nicholas Sanchez. Do you like to go by Nicholas? You prefer? Uh, I usually say Nick. I don't know why I said Nicholas. <laughs> I'll leave it in there. It's fine. <laughs> my nickname, Nicky Bobby. My mom's best friend actually gave it to me. The only way they know NASCAR is by Talladega Nights. I don't like it, and now everyone calls me it. But I guess that's my official nickname. My handwriting is horrendous. Look at my signature. I never learned cursive in school, and it still bites me to this day. I don't really consider driving a race car a job for me. It's what I like and it's a passion. But if I had to pick a job, I'd probably be in the real estate industry. I'm gonna be honest, I really don't have any hidden talents. If, if I did, it's hidden from me too. My favorite color is definitely black. All my cars are usually blacked out. Like I'm usually wearing black pants with a black shirt and I drive a black race truck, so definitely black. If I had to wear a warning label, it would probably say 
just don't talk to me. <laughs> My go-to karaoke song is nothing, because I would you would not catch me dead doing karaoke ever. Oh, <laughs> do I have any tattoos? No. Never, never gonna get one of those. <laughs> First of all, it sounds like it hurt, and second of all, I don't really want to be stuck with that on my arm or wherever it is for the rest of my life. <laughs> if I could have any animal as a pet, I'd probably pick uh, a corgi. I think they're very cute. You know, the queen had a lot of them, so I think it's a cool dog. It's adorable, it's small, it's low to the ground, it's cool. All the things we never knew we needed to know about Nick Sanchez. We should get him a corgi, get him a little pet, huh? Well, whenever he wins that race first, he needs to go get a tattoo, right? I'm going to take him to get the tattoo okay. for sure. And then take him to sing karaoke, since he clearly doesn't do that either. All right, let's talk about his potential, though, because he has been so strong this season. Really great rookie campaign. Yeah, he, he is super fast, Caitlin. Now, this is his sixth front row starting spot this year. He's got four poles, a lot of top fives and top tens. But what's impressed me the most is he's run 97% of the laps this year. So that means that he's not tearing up a lot of stuff. He's not taking a lot of unnecessary risk. And, and that's important for a young guy, a young driver in his first year making the playoffs. Uh, that's what's required and for them to learn that race craft, Todd, for him to learn how to manage those races and, and beat these other guys. We've seen him have speed, but I think that win is really close. Well, he, he's got a great guy in the box to learn from. Danny Stockman. I've been friends with Danny for a long time. Danny's a, a hard-nosed, old-school crew chief. <laughs> and the one thing that Danny says is this kid is the real mm -hmm. deal. He ah. is very high on Nick Sanchez. And for Danny to say that, that means a lot. But it, it, he says he studies constantly. He's always trying to figure out a better way that, or more of a better way to get better. Uh, just incredible young man on the track. He, he's made some mistakes. He learned from him, and now he's getting better every week. Yeah, he's cleaned them up here recently yeah. for sure. And no question, that endorsement from Danny Stockman, that means a lot Absolutely. for a young racer. So Nick Sanchez, he was eight years, ten days old the last time the trucks raced here in Milwaukee back in 2009. So you guys remember what else was going on in the world back then? Because uh, I was in ago. that race. I okay. don't know what else. Well, well, let's take a look at this. Miley Cyrus, she released Party in the USA, if you remember that song. Actually, so, David, sing, sing David us, was yeah, singing I, it yeah, earlier. Yeah, I was singing the in between. The Pittsburgh Steelers had their last Super Bowl win. It was also the year that the New York Yankees last won the World Series. And, David, you got your first two career wins in the Xfinity Series as that well. That was good. And, Bodine, you were a one-time Truck Series champion, and I was in college. And we're going to roll that? that picture later. Yeah, no, well, we're not let's not talk about the place. college days. <laughs> so a lot has changed, of course, since 2009. But one guy who's been out at Milwaukee for years and has a lot of experience on the field is Matt Crafton. So how is Crafton feeling going into the race today? Right now he's standing by out the racetrack with Josh. Yeah, Caitlin and uh, Matt Crafton, the only guy in the field now with experience here in Milwaukee in a truck. But that was all the way back in 2009. Anything you draw from, from then? No, nothing. Uh, all I remember is you go back and look at some of them. We all ran in that, the black patch in the corner. And now if you touch that black patch, it is slick, slick, slick down there. Um, as You can go in and put your left side tires on it early in a run. But then later in the run, you're up above it. And back in the day, you'd never even think about being out of that because it was so much slower. And uh, we were off yesterday. We were off really, really bad yesterday. Um, we tried a few things, didn't work. We swung, put kind of our baseline setup back in it when qualified. I uh, got on splitter a little bit too much, but we, we definitely are back to where we think we should be at least. I think every time I talk to you as of late, it's all about that cut line, that bubble pressure. What's the Matt Crafton mindset right now with two races left in, in the first round? You, you, just want, you want to talk about something. You just, you're grasping for something to talk about. We've still got two races to go. Just go out there and race and uh, put yourself in the right positions and just race your butt off. Just keep, keep reaching, buddy. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate your time, Matt. Caitlin? Thank you, Josh. Okay, usual Matt Crafton and his demeanor. This isn't really overly surprising <laughs> to any of us, I'm sure. But no. what do you think about him? I mean, he does have all that experience on his side. Is that going to help him today? I, I don't think it is. You heard him say the racetrack's totally different than it used to be. But, you know, the one thing I took away from that is they still don't have the speed that they need. You know, they were bad in practice, changed it. He, you know, typical Matt trying to be, uh, <laughs> you look on the bright side of things, feels like maybe he's got a better truck for race. But, you know, they can't come to these racetracks every week and struggle in practice and struggle in the qualifying. They, they've got to figure out how to get that speed off the trailer to qualify better. That's how you're going to get stage points, so being up front. And that's what he's got to worry about is points. I don't think they have the speed to win, so let's just worry about stage points and race points. And yeah, Matt's experience got him to the playoffs. No 
question right. about yes, it. When absolutely. times got tough, his back was against the wall. He had two back-to-back -back top tens the last two weeks, but he's still got to have some more speed like Todd was talking. He's sitting at minus two right now. He's got his teammate, Nick Sanchez, who's starting on the front row, who has pretty fast race trucks. I think he's got to find some speed if he thinks he's going to be able to advance. Your experience can only get you so far. And Matt has a ton of experience, and he's a great race car driver, but when your trucks just won't get there, it's hard to make up that ground and not be able to lead the laps and score the points that you need to. Yeah, Matt, the first driver on the outside looking in. We'll see how Crafton will fare today in Milwaukee. All right, still to come here on race day. Ty Majeski kicked off the playoffs with a win. Can he go two for two? We will discuss that team next. Plus, Corey Heim has been so strong throughout the course of this entire season. We will from hear from Corey out at the racetrack when we return. All that is on the way next. Welcome back to NASCAR Race Day. The Milwaukee Bucks, Harley Davidson, and beer. Milwaukee is known for a lot of things, but today the famed Milwaukee Mile makes an appearance on the Craftsman Truck Series calendar for the first time in 14 years. And the state of Wisconsin has given us a number of NASCAR champions over the years. I might add, Alan Kowicki got it done in 1992 in the Cup Series. Matt Kenseth, who could forget when he earned his Cup Series title in 2003. Johnny Sauter did it in the Craftsman Truck Series back in 2016. Travis Quapple, he too did it in the series in 2003. So there's been some great champions to come through from Wisconsin. And, you know, Ty Majeski is probably hoping that he is the next one because Wisconsin native Ty has already locked himself into the next round. You see the bracket here. Let's move Ty's name over to the round of eight because he knows he is one of the ones who is moving on. But the day has not gone the way Ty had hoped with technical inspection, having to start at the back, losing his crew chief, David. So this will be a little bit interesting for him. This is certainly not how any driver wants a race to begin. Yeah, and, and let's all put in perspective. This is his hometown race. This is a track that has a lot of history. He's grown up racing late model cars there. He wants to win this race just as bad as, as anything. And so, yes, he's going to put it 100% uh, effort in today, but it's going to be a challenge. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of stress because he is moving on <laughs> next week. Yes. And, and that win at IRP locks him in, Todd. But I think he can do it, but it is going to be a challenging day for this 98 team. Well, for sure, coming from the back. But, you know, the thing about it is they've had speed. They were fast in practice. You know, they've been fast at, at Richmond. They dominated a race, should have won. Bad strategy, took them out of the win, finished second. IRP, same thing, just dominated a race, got the win. And that's the way it was in practice. Everybody's talking about how fast he was in practice. But... I'm going to tell you right now, he's starting at the back, but I'm laying it down that he oh is going to go to victory Here lane today. I'm telling you right now, that truck is way too fast. This Todd's is getting, the first time. Put it out there. He's, too, he's, he's it out. already early in the Given show. A pick. I'm not even waiting until the end. Oh, okay, come on. that's fair. Well, I like that bold prediction. Yeah. That's going out on a limb, no doubt about it. So we've been talking about the speed of Ty Majeski. Also, Corey Heim has been a driver who's been there throughout the course of the year. Take a look at these two drivers' number comparison. Ty Majeski's one win to Corey's two equal numbers and Stage wins and laps led. So, what is Corey Heim's mindset going into the race today? He is standing by with Josh out at the track. Yeah, Caitlin, and after having practiced and qualifying yesterday, and I know you have an ARCA start here under your belt, so how do you feel about your chances in today's race? Yeah, it's hard to say just with the lack of experience of me and along with everyone else in the field, but um, felt really good about our long practice yesterday. It was nice to actually get like a good solid hour of practice and make some good changes. So, um, you know, can't say enough about our consistency over the past couple of months with track on garage, Twitter racing and our uh, safe light Tundra Tudor Pro should be really solid. So uh, I think everyone's going to be lacking a lot of rear grip today. So that'll be kind of the name of the game. And if we can stay on top of it, I think our chances are good. I know a number of times you said nothing changes with the approach of this team, but this is your first time in the Truck Series playoffs. What have you noticed? What's been different about the environment? Yeah, I think it's just everyone's really on top of it. You see everyone's really locked in. The teams are working harder than they ever have, and um, I really feel like it's very, very close in competition. So um, if you're not on top of it, you can show up one week and be far off, and if you have a bad race, then you're kind of buried in points. So, um, you know, as I mentioned with our consistency, I feel like it's really set up well for the playoffs just because you have to be consistent to be able to advance and get to, the, to Phoenix. So um, hopefully we can keep it going. And 10 straight top 10s for Corey Heim, Caitlin. 
Thank you, Josh. That tells the story of that consistency we just heard Corey mentioning. He really has been one of the top contenders throughout the whole season. You think he's a favorite for the title? Well, I don't know if he's the favorite, but boy, you got to put him right there in the top four. I think he's going to be going to Phoenix in that championship four. But, you know, the thing about Corey is, you know, the beginning of the year, he had a good run going. Then he made some mistakes. And I think at that point, Scott Zipidelli, his crew chief, probably sat him down and said, look, we got to cool it here. We got to calm down. And he's ripped off 10 top 10s in a row. I mean, for a young guy to come in this series with the competition level we have, that's incredible. His driving is just so mature, way beyond his experience level. And it just impressed me all year long. Even his interview there is pretty cool. Yeah. Calm Very and collected. Calm collected. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's pretty straight Steady to the Eddie. point. Uh, but, yeah, Corey drives with a lot of maturity. And he's sitting in a really good spot from a points position. We talk about Ty Majeski already being locked in. If, if Corey has a great day today, scores a lot, of stage points he could mathematically lock himself in to the next round so I think Scott Zipidelli and, and this team uh, representing the only Toyota truck in the playoffs Todd I think mm -hmm. they've got a lot of pressure on them but they've been able to handle it so far absolutely that combination Scott Zipidelli Corey Heim could be dangerous to the That's rest right. of the competition okay we got more race day on the way there's Ben Rhodes truck the 99 we're going to hear from him out at the track momentarily he of course won earlier this season can he get a win today we're going to find out. What about Christian Eckes? We're actually going to sit down driver 19 to talk about the potential of a title in the truck series. That story and more on the way next. Welcome back to race day with a look at the reigning champion here in the truck series. That's Zane Smith. He is starting 18th for the race today. All smiles. He looks very relaxed going into this event momentarily. Let's take a look at the playoffs leaderboard and focus in on our two most recent champions. As I just mentioned, Zane Smith got it done last year. Here's his 2023 season. Two wins already. Nine top fives and nine top tens for Zane. Ben Rose was the 2021 champion. One win. And while Ben doesn't have as many top five finishes, he's been a little more consistent than Zane and that shows with the average finish. So how is Ben Rhodes feeling going into the Milwaukee mile today? We now join Josh who is standing by with Ben at the track. Well, yeah, Caitlin and Ben Rhodes enters this race plus four to the cut line. I know that's a little stressful for you. We talked about it yesterday, <laughs> but uh, how are you feeling about your chances and how does that affect how you will compete today? Hey, man, it's only stressful because you keep bringing it up, but uh, no, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Oh, no, I mean, we're not really worried about it. We've just focused on our own program and, and I'm sure we'll be fine. Uh, the big thing is playoffs, the intensity kicks up. Everybody starts kind of making mistakes. We just don't want to be a part of that, run our own race. We made some big changes after practice and so far so good. I liked and qualifying it seems to be turning the middle a little bit better for us but we just over adjusted we kind of got to the other end of the spectrum now so we're going to dial it back a little bit and see how it starts for the beginning of the race but we got to stay ahead of it all day having a free truck here i think is what you need i mean the corners are just so long right so overall just really happy and uh, glad to have 1848 coffee on board they're a local coffee shop here and they've been super awesome to work with along with farm paint you're a guy who was obviously a past champion in this sport What's it going to take for you guys to get back to that championship form? Well, a win today would be a great start. Uh, you know, the thing about this, this, this new next-gen package has been that you have to unload, like, on point every single week. You don't have an opportunity to really change things. You have to be pretty much perfect from the time you unload and just tune on it a little bit. You know, we had a 50-minute practice yesterday, and, and that was nice. We were able to kind of make changes and do stuff that we wouldn't typically do, change packages and explore a little more, try to develop something. So it's just a different year, right? You got to be on point from the time you unload. And so far, we've been a little bit hit or miss, but we I think our strong point has been mile and a half. So, like, I'm really excited for Kansas next week. I think we kind of gave one up there earlier in the season, and I'm looking forward for, you know, maybe a little redemption. There you go. Appreciate your time and good luck, Ben. Caitlin? Thanks, Josh. Redemption on the mind for Ben Rhodes. Here's a look at where the playoff drivers will line up for today. Ben will start 10th. He's the best of the three Thor Sport trucks. And if you missed it, Ty Majeski will be going to the rear for a tire issue, which saw the 98 truck right rear tire confiscated by NASCAR in tech. Ty will also have to do a pass-through penalty. The fastest playoff driver, though, was Grant Enfinger, who is on the pole for the race today. So we just heard from Ben. Those drivers hate to be reminded of the cut line, I might add. Everyone not wanting to talk about the cut line at this point in the year, but what do you think uh, we may see out of him? Yeah, the, the drivers don't want to talk about it, but mm. I know they're thinking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, you know, Ben got the big win at Charlotte, and he just said in his interview that they feel like they are a little better at these mile-and-a-half racetracks, but he's coming off a couple of pretty 
middle of the pack runs the last two weeks at Richmond and IRP, and he's found himself in a little bit of a vulnerable spot. So he definitely doesn't want to be around that cut line going to Kansas. But starting 10th today, Todd, he can at least see the front row when the green flag drops. But but Ben's a, a championship driver. Uh, I know that he'll he'll race hard and race smart and, and try to live to make it next week. Well, you know, the thing about Ben is he, he hasn't had good speed, really, the, since his win at Charlotte. Yeah. And, you know, they made a crew chief change, went to Brian Ross as a crew chief. Brian came in there trying to shake it up and do some things a little different, and it's still about the same thing. You just haven't had the speed. You know, 16th last week at IRP, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to get him to the next round. So that's what Ben's talking about. It feels like uh, Kansas is his best shot. You know, he's still got a race today. He likes his truck, starting tense. You never know what can happen. Yeah, keep an eye on Ben Rose, rolling off tense, like you said, for the race momentarily out in Milwaukee. Now, still to come here on race day, Christian Eckes has been off to a good start so far in the playoffs. We will sit him down next to hear his thoughts on a potential title. That story and more, it is on the way next. Stay with us. Rookie QB CJ Stroud leads the Texans against the Saints. On a catch! Preseason football tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox. Welcome back to Race Day from Milwaukee Mile with a look there at playoff contender Christian Eckes starting six for the race today. Already a two-time winner on the year. Talking there with Corey Heim. We'll have to see how those drivers fare today. Christian Eckes, though, he is fresh off a runner-up finish in the first playoff race on the year. So how is he feeling going into Milwaukee? And does he believe this could be his year for a Truck Series title? We sat him down to get some answers. Whenever you're ready. Christian in 2020 was uh, whew, young. We all thought when he came into KBM, oh, this is it, and he's going to win some races. It just didn't happen, and, you know, got booted out. The sport is a lot more than I really anticipated it to be at that age. It's a lot about relationships, and I didn't really do a good job building those relationships. The roughest part of it all was everything was, was up, up, up at that point. And then everything was really down, not having a ride, not really knowing if I was ever going to race again. Racing was all I knew, and I remember texting a lot of people like, hey, like, you need a mechanic? Like, I have some experience over the years, but not a lot. Like, just kind of trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. There was an opportunity at Thor Sport, and thankfully that happened, or uh, I probably wouldn't be here today. Christian Eckes, his first career win. Man! Vegas and Victory Lane, that's got to feel great. Halfway through last year, we saw a different Christian. He figured out how to be better, got that win, and unfortunately had to leave Thorsport. It was you know mid-November, and I still thought I was returning to the team and, and didn't really know what was happening, and I learned a few weeks later. and yeah, It definitely caught me off guard, and Bill literally texted me, I think, like the, the day before I was going down to Thorsport. And it was definitely a lot less stressful to feel wanted in a way. Bill McAnally brought him to this team because he felt Christian could make a difference. He has made the best first impression with his new team that you can make. Go win. Enjoy the moment, guys. Enjoy it. Christian Eckes comes to a brand new team this year, and it's been a good fit. Second career win. It's been a tough offseason, but I'm driving harder than I ever have. I got a lot to prove. I'm pumped. It's going to be a really good year. It's over. Christian Eckes. They are losing their minds down here. Man, it's so fun being here. Let's go. I feel like we have a team that's capable of winning a championship, and I feel like I'm capable of winning a championship as well. And that's what drives us every day to, to be that, and I feel like we can do that. Christian Eckes in 2023 is a lot older now, a lot more mature, and a lot more ready to win this championship. I got goosebumps when I said that. I'm not going to lie. I still got them. Such a good interview. He gave himself goosebumps in it. How about that? A nice playoff mustache he's growing there for old Christian Eckes. But it has been really neat to see this young racer come into his own, and now he very much is in the conversation for a title, Todd. Absolutely. You know, I, I was fortunate this week. Christian came over from coaching. Janet cooked his dinner. <laughs> and we sat down at the computer and watched some stuff from Milwaukee. And the impressed part for me was he asked all the right questions, and he knew what he was talking about. And setup stuff, he has his setup. He reads it and studies it. He's a student of what he's doing, and I think that's why he's getting better, one reason he's getting better. But you heard him say he's much more mature this year. You know, he's gone through a lot of heartache, ups and downs with his career. He's in a great spot. And I, I told him, I think this 
team that he's with just feels like it's home for him. And you can see it on the racetrack. Running up front, he's got a great shot for a championship. I think maturing off the racetrack helps you mature on the racetrack a lot of times. And, and that was a great piece what? that Christian kind of acknowledged. Like, man, I was in a bad spot a couple mm -hmm. of times in my young career. And now I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have. He puts in the work. And I'll be honest, I did overlook Christian a little bit going into the playoffs. I didn't know if he had the speed and the consistency to be able to make a run. But he goes out at RP and he crushes mm -hmm. it, scores a lot of points. Uh, he's fast today. So, yeah, that, that was pretty impressive coming from that young man. If he's got Bodine on his side as a teacher, he's in good shape. Well, well, what is cooking over at your house? That's what I want to know. Have we been invited <laughs> over for dinner? Apparently not. I'll tell Janet to bring you over. All right. All right, guys, we got more race down the way from the Milwaukee Mile. The countdown, just a little over 12 minutes to the command. There's Taylor Gray. He's starting fourth for the race today. He's hopeful he could potentially get a win out there in Wisconsin. Our race picks and more coming your way after this. Stay with us right here on FS1. Can one man change everything? I'm going to give you that. Build something out of nothing. Reinvent an entire team. Say that again. And turn a forgotten program into the talk of college football. Give old fans new hope. Can a one win team upset a Big 12 powerhouse? We bring in the heat. Give Gus and Joel something to yell about. Wow. Can one man change everything? Baby, you best believe. We're about to find out. Give me my darn theme music. Big Noon is prime time. This week on America's only daily NASCAR show, the playoffs have finally arrived. We recap the regular season finale at the World Center of Racing with a Daytona-sized version of Winner's Weekend. Plus, hear which driver celebrated and whose heart was broken. What the f*** was that? In Radioactive. And Thursday and Friday, catch Cup Playoff Media Day. You'll hear from all the championship hopefuls gearing up for the postseason opener in Darlington. Don't miss The Hub. Weeknights, 6 p.m. Eastern on FS1. And welcome back into race day. Carson Hosevar is one of the hopefuls for the win today. He's finished top five in seven of the last nine races. He starts third. What about Ty Majeski? We've been talking about him a lot. He was the winner last time out, hoping to get a win in his home state of Wisconsin. Time now for our race picks, who we believe will be victorious out at the Milwaukee Mile. And Ty, we will let you do the honors. Oldest first. I already oh. told you who my pick was. We just looked at him. Okay, so you are yeah. sticking by that. Maje no, Majeski, man. He's going from last to first. Last to first. That yep. is a bold prediction, yeah, but I, I do like that. Okay, That'll be so fun to watch. Well, I'm going Majewski. with the outside pole setter, Nick Sanchez. The rookie will get his first win of his good. career and wow. punch that ticket to the next round. These are all good picks. I'm liking this. All right, my turn. I'm going with the driver we heard from earlier in the show, and that would be Corey Heim. You said he seemed very calm and collected. <laughs> I think good. he's already been a multi-winner this year. I think he gets a win today and moves his spot over to the next round. So okay. we're getting closer and closer. Closer to racing out there at the Milwaukee Mile. Time now to go trackside for pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise that you are able. And gentlemen, remove your hat as we welcome MRO chaplain Billy Malden to deliver our invocation. Heavenly Father, as we rise up to recognize your presence in our lives, Lord, we thank you for such a beautiful day and the opportunity to go racing. We ask you to be with these drivers, teams, officials. Lord, as always, keep everybody safe. Bless the fans with a great day of racing, great memories. Father, as always, we remember the men and women of our armed forces and first responders everywhere. Be with them and be with their families and keep them safe. Father, may your peace and your presence be with us all. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem. From Milwaukee, the St. Joseph Font Basilica Choir. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so Broad stripes and bright stars
Wow, what a great crowd on hand, a great anthem as well, and a, a flyover to get us set for playoff race number two. It's sure to be exciting, guys. We yeah. can't wait for it. For Todd, David, and myself, that does it for us here on race day. It's time to go racing out the Milwaukee Mile and check in with the voices in the booths. And for that, we say hello to our friend, Adam Alexander. Thank you, Caitlin. For the first time since 2009, we're racing on the Milwaukee Mile. So nice to be back at the Wisconsin State Fair Park. This afternoon, it's the Clean Harbors 175, race two in the playoffs for the Craftsman Truck Series. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hello, old friend. The second race of the opening round sees a showdown on a track rich with NASCAR history. The Milwaukee Mile is back at this time. There's an air of postseason intensity. One contender has already punched his ticket to the next round, but the heat is on for nine others. The title fight rages on, and the objective is clear. Survive and advance. Win and you're in. Who has what it takes to claim their spot? The Craftsman Truck Series starts now on FS1. One race down, six to go, chasing that trophy in the Craftsman Truck Series. Great day in Wisconsin, blue skies, plenty of sunshine, high of 70 degrees, and the crowd is outstanding as well. Welcome in, everybody, with Michael Walter, Phil Parsons. I'm Adam Alexander. So good to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon. It's race two in the playoffs. The guy that won race number one, Ty Majeski. I said he's got to be the favorite here today, but facing some challenges, Phil. Yeah, he certainly is. He certainly was the favorite coming in here. I think everybody had him circled the job he did over the last couple of races. Richmond, he dominated. Miskew on pit road cost him the win, but he went to IRP and put that behind him. The numbers he put up at IRP were unbelievable. You can see him in yellow. That's because he's locked into the round of ten, uh, round of eight, no matter what. But how about 179 laps led? His average running position, 1.1. He never got farther back than second. But he is going to have some issues here. But even though he's going to have to start from the back, he's going to have to make a pass through penalty. That truck is good enough from practice yesterday that I'm not sure that we can count him out. But no matter what happens, the fact that he's in yellow right there means he's in the round of eight no matter what. And I will say this, if he's as good today as he's been the last couple of races, he's going to put on a great show for us. Michael, let's talk about this track. Haven't been here in quite a while. So much history and tradition at the Milwaukee Mile. Yeah, Adam, you said it. We hadn't been here since 2009, but this place opened in 1903. Can you imagine that? We've been racing here ever since. You can see the oldest continuously operated motor speedway in the world. That is amazing. 16 truck races here. <laughs> First truck race was in was 5,181 days ago. It's been a while. That's a long time ago. Yeah, and I raced here for the first time in 1984, so I've got some experience on this track. But the track to me is more interesting this year than ever. There's new pavement, new patching around the bottom. And as a veteran, I'm thinking, go down there on that. Every time they get down there on that, they get loose and they get sideways. This place is so racy. We're going to see two and three wide on a flat racetrack. Speeds up to 150 miles an hour. It's going to be an action-packed afternoon, Adam. So much to talk about this afternoon. Now we hear from our pit reporters, Amanda Busick, Josh Sims. We start things off with Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Adam, in response to the news that GMS, GMS Racing is suspending operations next season, Grant Infinger said that he's happy that the news has been announced, that now there are absolutely no questions of what next season will look like. He said there's also no questions on his intent of winning this championship. You saw him sixth on that playoff leaderboard. He said him and this team are focused more than ever. Well, they showed that on display, taking the pole here today with a 29.7-second lap around the Milwaukee Mile. 
he'll lead this Craftsman Truck Series to the green, Josh. Well, Nick Sanchez called yesterday's practice session one of the best he's had all season long. He said it's the most comfortable he's felt understanding what his truck needed and relaying that back to the team. Well, it showed as he was the second fastest in practice, went out and qualified on the front row. Now it's about transferring that over to the race. Nick is dealing with that pressure, being on the bubble, just two points to the good. He said the easiest way to alleviate that pressure, that's to go out and get a win, guys. Qualify up front. You put yourself in position for stage points. Sanchez has done that here today. It's a great day for racing at the Milwaukee Mile. Let's go trackside and get the command of fire engines. On behalf of Clean Harbors and the return of NASCAR to the Milwaukee Mile to deliver the most famous words in racing, Grand Marshal of today's Clean Harbors 175, five-time Olympic gold medal speed skating champion, Bonnie Blair. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go, Milwaukee drivers. Start your engines. Woo! We mentioned the history of the Milwaukee Mile. So many great sports venues in Wisconsin. Check it out. We got Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And that's not the only one. Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, home of the Badgers. American Family Field in Milwaukee for the Brewers. Road America. And of course, we're playing golf at Whistling Straits. We're racing next on FS1. For over 40 years, we've been cleaning up after natural disasters and keeping businesses and industries clean. We've recycled more oil than anyone in North America. There's no secret to our extraordinary success. We just hire extraordinary people. At Clean Harbors, we know protecting our planet isn't something you do overnight. It's something you have to work at every day. Just about go time at the Milwaukee Mile. It's playoff race number two for the Craftsman Truck Series. You win today and you're in the playoff field, that means you're moving on to the round of A. We told the story of Ty Majeski, so many other good storylines when it comes to our playoff drivers. Our Clean Harbors 175 starting lineup is in bottom of your screen. Grain and finger on the pole for the sixth time in his career. And now we take a look at our track description for today's race. Michael? Yeah, located just down the road from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Got the Milwaukee mile, a mile in length. You can see those corners, how flat they are. These drivers are really challenged with getting these trucks to the bottom of the racetrack. See the new pavement down low. That is not beneficial. They'll be sliding way up high. I think you're going to see two and three wide racing. As I mentioned in the open, this track opened in 1903. That makes me laugh. You weren't, you weren't there. You and Benny, you and Benny were. Or no? Benny ran there, yeah. yeah. So we've had a look at the Craftsman track description. Now our race analysis, Phil. This race, 175 laps, 175 miles. You see the stage one, 55. Stage two, 55. Our final stage is 65. Pit window somewhere between 75 and 80 laps. The key is here, though, they have five sets of tires for this race. The crew chief said there's so many sets of tires now they're confused on when to put them on. I think they save a set at least for that last stage. And when they use the other set, who knows? And I think we could see guys put on tires of, like, like with 10 to go if they've got that extra set. And remember, Tom Ajeski's down one tire, so he only has 4.75 sets of tires. I like that math. Let's see if we can talk to Tom Ajeski. Hey, Tom Ajeski, Phil Parsons, Michael Walter, Adam Alexander in the Fox booth. You got a copy? Single file here. Pit road speed check this time. Yellow line to yellow line. It's a little odd here. I know you know that, but yellow line, yellow line. Pit road speed check this time. Hey, Ty Majeski, Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy? He's going to be concentrating on his getting his pit road speed. May not be able to hear us. Let's, let's let him go and concentrate on getting that pit road speed. 
We mentioned the challenges that he faces today, and here you are interrupting the pre-race routine, Phil. I know, I know. I, I felt bad about we're, it, too. We're, we're selfish. We want, we want to get everything we can for our viewers <laughs> at home, get them to know what's going on inside the helmet of those racers. Let's go back down to pit road. Josh has a report for us. Yeah, let's talk about a homecoming for Derek Krause, who's making his second truck start of the season, his first in the seven truck, the Wisconsin native, a former regular in the series, looking to prove he deserves a full-time ride again. Now, he says the truck is going to need a little bit of work if it's going to contend for a win, but he's got some past experience here in a late model, feels his understanding of this track could help, and if he can get that truck the right way, tuned up to what he needs, they could be a contender by the end of the day, Amanda. Well, Josh, a guy that might want to put his name in the hat for a full-time ride is that guy right there, the number one of William Sawalich. He's one of the four drivers pulling double duty here today, and he was on pole in the ARCA race, and that's exactly where he finished celebrating on victory lane. He told me that he loves these back-to-back -back races as he's already in a racing mindset. But what I love, he's the only person, Adam, in Milwaukee that can see that checkered flag two times today. Looking for a, a sweep, qualified in the 12th position, fifth start of the year, and three of his first four resulting in top 10 finishes. We know the young driver is very talented and capable of getting it done. We check out our onboard cameras, starting with Ty Majeski. Road Ranger, there's Ty Majeski on board, working that wheel in. He's going to roll off from the 13th position. No, he's not. He's going to drop to the rear after some shot fake <laughs> <laughs> after some issues in pre-race inspection so uh, we'll see how that goes and here's daniel die phil yeah we're going to ride along this is the low payment kings.com on board for daniel die best ever career starting position for daniel die knocking on the door of that first time top 10 he's had good success here in the arca series two top five finishes could be today for that top 10 for daniel three rookies qualify inside the top five you mentioned the career best qualifying effort for daniel die same for taylor gray outside of row two and that 17 for Tricon. And we've touched on Sanchez making his sixth front row start of the year. Of course, he's one of our playoff contenders. See, the lights are off on our pace truck. These guys are Haley Deegan, the lady, she's ready to go. Everybody's fired up about being back in Milwaukee for the first time, Adam, since 2009. Remember, the 98 will take the green flag from the back. And then the next lap, he will come in to do a pass-through penalty. And uh, he hopes that's the end of his penalties. But NASCAR will look at what they did to that right rear wheel and see if there's more penalties to come. We'll be, in, we'll be uh, updating that throughout the week. And finger first pole of the year takes the outside lane to start this race. Instead of going inside, Sanchez to his left. 175 laps, 175 miles. Another step toward the championship. Off we go at the Milwaukee Mile. Great start for Grant. Able to parlay that outside starting position to grab that lead. And keep your eye on the 17 truck of Taylor Gay. Great. Yesterday in the long run, he had the fastest truck. Oh, a little bit of a bump there. That white truck is Christian Eckes, the 19. He's another truck that was really good on average during that practice yesterday. How about to battle for the lead? Sanchez trying to take control in that inside lane. Side by side off of turn two. Left of your screen, Ty Majeski serving that pass through penalty. And keep an eye on him as he exits pit road and where does he fit in? Does he go a, a lap down? And if so, how far back in the pack will he be? I think he's going to stay on the lead lap, guys. I so too. He's coming off turn two now in the lead pack, just getting to the start finish line. Hugely beneficial for Ty Majeski. I really felt like he's going to need an early caution to get the free pass, get back on the lead lap. The fact that he stays on the lead lap and he's got this kind of an advantage over the leaders puts him in a pretty good position here. And now we'll just watch his lap times, Adam, and we'll break down what kind of shot he has at winning this race. You can see there, clear track ahead of him, just like uh, our battle for the lead. <laughs> they have an uh, open track ahead of them. So we'll take a look at these lap times and let you know how fast that number 98 is. I'll say this, he'd still take 
that, that early caution. It would help him a lot, oh, even yeah. though he doesn't need it to get the free pass here. Yeah, the guys told me it took about 17 and a half seconds to roll down pit road. So they're lapping this track at around 31 seconds. So he did a very economical job getting to pit road, down pit road, and off pit road. And you see Majeski in the pylon. He'll be highlighted in green. That's because he won IRP, the playoff opener. He's already advanced to the round of eight. The other nine drivers you see highlighted in gold, they're playoff contenders, and their outcome here today will go a long way in deciding where they fit into the equation when we hit that elimination race two weeks from now at Kansas Speedway. Down to Amanda. Adam, I talked to Ty Majeski about that drive through prior to the race, and he thought that he might rejoin the track amongst the leaders, so he's going to be happy to see all that clean air ahead of him. And as you said, he is locked into this next round in eight, and that's why he said, you know, I'm not really worried. I'm happy that if this had to happen, it was going to be right here at this race, the second race of the playoff. He is locked in, guys. But we've talked so much about what he did in the regular season finale at Richmond. Dominates, gets a speeding penalty, put back in the pack. He drove straight through the field, Michael. So this is a team that understands overcoming a problem. And he did that at the end of stage two. By starting behind the eight ball this early, it gives them a, a huge opportunity and plenty of time to get back in this race. Yeah, fast truck, though. Third fastest truck that lap on the racetrack. He's been consistently in the top five each lap since he's been back on the racetrack. And he knows this track. He raced here earlier this year. He's, he won. I know, and he, he's got so much experience here, understands it. That means, to me, a really good long run truck because he knows what he's looking for. A lot of these guys have never raced here before. Some of them are only six years old the first <laughs> last time we raced here. So, so the trucks are really interesting to see who's able to figure out what kind of setup it's going to take to be successful. And that nice battle for the lead to start out, but Sanchez has fallen in line behind Infinger, seven tenths of a second behind. Gray continues in third. That's Taylor Gray, the rookie, and then three playoff drivers behind him: Ekas, Hosevar, and Corey Hine. The only playoff driver we have. Oh, great battle here. There's Daniel Dye, Bailey Curry, the 41, Daniel in the 43, Matt Crafton, our playoff driver, coming to the inside of Daniel. Matt De Benedetto had to go to the back of the pack for unapproved adjustments. So he's back on the 25th spot. He's our only playoff driver outside the top 20. What's that on the back of the 41 truck of Bailey Curry? Is I think he's made a, contact with somebody, yeah, hasn't is he? Is that just a decal or is there no, damage? That's, that's, there's damage there. That's the rear bumper cover that's being ripped apart. That's a that's a that's basically a fiberglass piece. I'd say we'll see a little more of that today. Sometimes you've got to get a little bit aggressive if you're going to move around someone on track here at Milwaukee. Worldwide Express on that number 41 truck. Such a great partner to the NASCAR world. Sponsoring Carson Hosevar occasionally. Some cup races with uh, Ross. Ross. Suarez. What a fun night it was last night in Daytona, Ooh. huh? Man, oh man. Season finale was right on point. Chris Buescher, he's pretty good. <laughs> One, three in the last five. Here it's the Grand Infinger Show leading 10 laps in. Thirteen laps in. It's the Clean Harbors 175 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series live at the Milwaukee Mile. First caution of the afternoon. And unfortunately, it's for a Wisconsin born driver. Not this one. Time Jeske making a pit stop. Minor adjustment there on the 98 truck was last anyway, and it's just a good way to get ahead of whatever adjustments he thinks what he might need. What I heard need. on the radio. Yeah, and what I heard on the radio, guys, is that they were going to wanted the truck a little more tight, so they took a round out of that right rear and made some track board adjustments and a little bit top off of fuel. There he goes, back on the track. I like that adjustment, Phil. Just uh, get ahead of this truck. Now let's get to the other Wisconsin driver who brought out our first caution of the afternoon, Josh Balicki. Josh had something go down on the right front, whether it was what caused the wreck or after he hit the wall, but the team has been working on it. Yeah, it was definitely flat. Let's, oh, yeah. he, it's down now. It's flat going in the corner. Tough break for that Tyler Young team. Insurance yeah. King on board for Josh Balicki. Was it about 30 miles away or something Josh is from? Yeah. Certainly that area. That almost looked like the tire maybe rubbed a tie rod or part of the suspension yeah. and just went flat that soon in the race and right into the outside wall he went. Yeah, there it is right there, obviously. Uh, 
seen better days. Good road racer is Josh Balicki. And we talk about the fact that he's from here in Wisconsin, his first ever NASCAR start in the Xfinity Series at Road America over in Elkhart Lake. Looked at the entry list, saw one of the teams didn't have a driver, made some phone calls, said, I'll drive your car for you. And that is how he got his first opportunity and made his NASCAR debut. And now he's raced in all three series, Cup, Xfinity, and of course, right here in the Craftsman Truck Series. That's got to be disappointing. Home game, you get your buddies to come out and watch you race a little bit and only run 10 laps, and it's all done into the outside wall. You know, when you look at the history of this racetrack for the trucks, the drivers that have won here, really a who's who of success, mainly in the Craftsman Truck Series. But Kurt Busch won here in 2000. Yes, he was good in the trucks, but he's been great across the board. Let's, let's go back and look at his win here 23 years ago. Yeah, 11 of our 15 win races were won by champions. Kurt was not one of those because he was not a Truck Series champion. He finished second points his rookie year. Look how young Kurt was back in two. I guess we're all younger back in <laughs> 2000, but uh, what an amazing career that Kurt Busch has had. Yeah, it's just uh, a great driver. He's one of those guys that no matter where he went, he made the team he went to drive for better. And that's what he'll always be known for, his passion, his heart, the wins, obviously, across all three top series, and the 2017 Daytona 500 champion, NASCAR champion, a legend, is Kurt Busch. And he's still in the garage, Jerry, with his Monster Energy hat on and his drink, just trying to help 2311, help anybody he can get better. That's what he's all about. He won with every organization he drove for, right? Announced his retirement yesterday, and, and I would say that that probably is what's most impressive. I mean, the numbers are incredible, and Mike, you laid them out there. But the reality is he did it with so many different teams. It didn't matter what organization he was competing for. As you said, he made them better and took them to victory lane. And in some cases, won championships, and that was awesome for him. Yeah, he has a younger brother that's pretty good, too. He's decent. Yeah. I'd say both will be first ballot Hall of Famers. Should be absolutely 100%. Hey, since we're taking a trip down memory lane, NASCAR 75, let's go back to 1995. First time the tailgaters paid a visit to the Milwaukee Mile. Skinner's crew had told him, say, hey, back off, save those tires. Let that 30 truck go until near the end. It looks like he might have saved those tires just enough. Here he comes. Great job by Skinner. Skinner will go a little bit high. Scepter will use that to get back on the inside again. Great racing. Boy, if they don't get into each other, this will be unbelievable. This is this is for the win. Two laps to go. This is the greatest truck race of the year. Side by side. Two to go. A lap and a half almost now. First. Oh, and the truck race gets out. out. He gets one. And here comes Skinner across the line. It will be Skinner. It doesn't get any better than that. Wow. Well, Standing right. ovation all around this racetrack for the NASCAR Super Truck. Mike Skinner wins the first truck race here at the Milwaukee Mile, goes on to claim the championship, 1995. How about that all-star cast of announcers? <laughs> Ken Squire and Ned Jarrett up in the booth, along with Kenny Wallace and Mike Joy on pit road. They're getting ready to interview Skinner. Was that like an oh, by, oh, by the way, Kenny Wallace? Is that what that was? I, I don't know. <laughs> I like Kenny always entertaining in the broadcast booth. I like what we're seeing here today. we got... Sanchez dropping to the bottom, giving that a whirl. We saw Enfinger make that work, but he had a side-by-side -side battle for five or six laps to make that work. Eck is strong again this week. That's good to see. Restarts very entertaining in your ARCA broadcast earlier today. They were, sure were. Jesse Love is so good on the restarts, and William Sawalich dominated that race. And obviously, Williams are in the top ten in this race. But just about every restart, Jesse Lett was able to wrestle the lead away, and Sawalich had to, had, to, had to get it back, and he did. There's Sawalich right there in the one truck. On the restart, got five playoff drivers inside the top six. Row one, just like when we started the race, in finger and Sanchez. Back to the green flag. Check on Tom Ajeski's progress as we go through this run. He's going to restart 31st, guys. See how long it takes him to get up inside the top 20. I think he's got a chance to get up possibly to the top 15 by the end of this stage. 38 laps to go. I was going to ask, can he get some stage points here? Is it 
Is it out of the realm of possibility that he could rally to the top 10? I don't think he might need another caution, but I don't think it's out of the question. Is he going to go through the middle here? Excuse me, fellows. Uh, got a fast truck. Is it enough room there? Wow, that's tight. Look at there. Brett Holmes with a little bit of contact there on Majeski, and Majeski dives to the bottom on Lawless Allen. I think the answer was no, there wasn't enough room, <laughs> but he made it work. Confidence not a problem for the 98 right now. A couple of trucks ahead of him is another playoff driver, Matt DiBenedetto. We'll see what Matt's got. He went to the back at the start of this race. Hasn't made a lot of progress. This is a real test for Matt here. If he can't keep pace with Majeski, he's got issues today. John Hangarani making his truck series debut, the 61 truck right there for Shiki Atori. He had a top five finish earlier today in the Arkham Menards race. There he is right behind the Benedetto on the Rackley roofing truck. And there's Haley Deegan just ahead of these racers in that 13 truck. She's 22nd right now as De Benedetto sizes her up on the inside. Comes Majeski on the outside. Look at that little spurt through the center of the corner and off turn four here. Matt's a veteran. He knows that Majeski's got that fast truck. No sense trying to hold him up. Maybe he can follow him up through there. He's gonna have to. Got to go to school and make that work. Yeah, what, about Chase, yeah, what about Chase Purdy? Fast number four, Bamba Buggy's truck. Nice moves early. He's trying to battle up toward the top five. Qualified in the top ten. Did Chase Purdy? He stayed there. And just behind him, William Sawalic. We talked so much about this young hot shoe out of Minnesota. Started 12, but finds himself in the eighth position right now. 16 years old, Adam. So impressive every time he comes out. Yeah, he goes to the little sh the tight short tracks and is able to stand toe to toe with these veterans and run inside the top 10 week in and week out. Josh, what are they saying down there in the one pit? Yeah, Phil, and that's the big thing. You guys talk about just the confidence this kid has, just 16 years old, but he said the transition into the trucks when it comes to these short tracks has been pretty seamless for him to the point where he has conversations constantly with Corey Heim, and he provides some feedback and advice to Corey Heim, a guy that's been full-time in this series all year long. He felt good about his truck. He said the biggest thing going into this race, he has to up his aggression level from the ARCA race. We're seeing that right now so far. You're going to grow. You got to put yourself in so many different situations. He's taken on all different types of racetracks, Arkham trucks. He's seeing it all, and that is another stepping stone as he climbs the ladder in stock car racing. Grant Infinger is your leader at Milwaukee. Sanchez, Taylor Gray, Hosovar, Heim, the top five. We're off and rolling here in Wisconsin. Tonight, the NFL is back on Fox. Bring that dog out. Gotta love it. It all starts as rookie QB CJ Stroud looks to make his mark. My goodness. And ignite a new era in Houston. Incredible. Now, he leads the Texans into a preseason showdown against the newly minted Derek Carr and the Saints. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown. Preseason football. Tonight at 8 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Craftsman Truck Series racing at the Milwaukee Mile. Grant Infinger, great veteran, started on the pole, led every lap in control midway through our fifth, uh, first stage of the afternoon. Sanchez is second. Taylor Gray, the rookie, hanging strong after getting his career best qualifying effort. And there's and in, Carson Hosovar in the fourth position. We figure he's going to be a part of this story before today's over. Week in and week out, he's one of the guys you have to beat in that 42 truck, and he's closing in on Taylor Gray. There's so many of these drivers really had no experience here at the Milwaukee Mile. He actually came up here Father's Day weekend and ran a super late model race, so he really felt like that was advantageous to him. We talked to him during our qualifying show today. Three wins in a regular season. That was more than anyone. And when you look at what he's done really since the middle portion of May, just on an absolute roll, top five and seven of the nine races, and Michael said it so many times, the, the cup start at St. Louis, the Xfinity experience across the board, his confidence really in a good place right now, and it's showing, and so is this guy, Corey Heim. You talk about a roll, give me eight consecutive top tens for the regular season champ. 
He had led zero laps in the first six races of the year. He has led races now in his last ten races, uh, led laps in the last ten races that he's run. Remember, he missed a race due to an illness and still won the regular season point championship, right now running in the pit spot. Hosevar good in practice yesterday. Heim was as well. You could say the same about Christian Eckes. He's sixth in the running order. What about that 11, Amanda? Well, Adam, he went back to that race that he missed at Gateway. Actually, the first track that he stepped onto after that was right here at Milwaukee. He spent five hours testing in a super late model to get his energy back, to get back in his mentality. But it was a pit stop here before we saw him again in Charlotte. If you look at the pylon, Tymajewski <laughs> is blistering the field right now, going wherever he needs to go from the back, a pass through penalty to start the race to 14th. Incredible. Chasing down our reigning champion, Zane Smith. Zane had a good truck in practice yesterday now, but outside the top 10, and right now is in Majewski's sights. A tell of two tapes is Ty Majewski charging through the field, and unfortunately, Another playoff contender, Matt Benedetto. he's going in the other direction. He started in the back, really hasn't gone anywhere, Adam. It's been a struggle for the 25 truck. They've got to get their stuff together, try to make some moves in this race. A little bit surprised with Zane, too. He's not going anywhere either. In that nine, in the 38 truck there, just ahead of Majeski. Yeah, a lot of people in the garage area said that in practice yesterday that he had one of the best trucks. But now remember, they haven't had a chance to make any adjustments to these trucks. But how about Derek Krause? Started back way, way back, I think, in about the 25th position, 25th, and now battling for a top 10 run here. Good good job early on for Derek Krause, local driver. What about this seven truck? You, you put it on the track, and it's going to have some pace to it. I think Derek was really frustrated with practice yesterday. Heard an interview where he said it just didn't go well. Today, he's on it, though. Of course, Lane Riggs driving that seven truck at IRP two weeks ago. Finished third, his career best. That truck won earlier this season in dominating fashion at North Wilkesboro with Kyle Larson behind the wheel. So we know how fast it is. Remember last year, William Byron dominated the race at Martinsville to get a grandfather clock in this seven truck. And I'll say this about Krause. Not a lot of opportunities this year, only his second truck start. But if you go back to the springtime, those dash for cash races in the Xfinity series, he had a chance to drive for Colleg Racing. First ever starts on the Xfinity side, netted a couple of top tens. So he's been able to show off his driving talent this year with limited opportunities. He's way faster than the 35 right now, but just hadn't been able to figure out how to make the move yet. That's as close as he's been right there. Can he dive bomb him into turn one? Yeah, I, guess, I think he's going to get him. He is. He may slide up in front of him, take the air away, but uh, good pass by Derek Krause. Move him in a tenth. Another position here that Tom Majeski's trying to grab away from Zane. It's a pretty truck this week. Black and gold, number 38. Yeah, Birchgold.com on the side of that truck. Move Majeski up another spot to 13th. We've got 18 laps to go. I, I think he's going to get stage points. I think he's going to get all the way up into the top 10. Less than three seconds behind Derek Krause, who is in the 10th position right now. I think Krause is on the move, though. I think that truck might drive up even maybe near the top five. As you see Daniel die there in the 43 truck. We started in the top five, Amanda, but man, struggle so far from Double D. Totally, yeah, it's the best start of his career. So you know Daniel behind that truck is a little bump, but we're hearing that the truck is running on the left front splitter. Blake Bainbridge confirmed that that's exactly what they were seeing here from the pit box as well. So with 17 laps to go in this stage, Daniel Dye wants to see that quickly or a caution. Yeah, you hate this for driver 43. Not only the great qualifying run, but two real good races here the last two years. In ARCA competition, you felt like today might be his day, but sliding early is Daniel Dye. 16 laps to go. Stage number one. It continues to be Grant Infinger out front. It's so good to be back on the Milwaukee Mile. Can one man change everything? I'm going to give you that. Can one man 
10 team upset a Big 12 powerhouse. We bring in the heat. Give Gus and Joel something to yell about. Wow. Can one man change everything? Baby, you best believe. We're about to find out. Give me my darn theme music. Big Noon is prime time. It's a good day to be Grant Enfinger. Start on the pole, dominate the race, and that's what he's done so far. It's the Clean Harbors 175 at the Milwaukee Mile for the Craftsman Truck Series with Michael Waltrip, Phil Parsons, I'm Adam Alexander, Amanda Busick on pit road with Josh Sims. Tell us about our race leader, Josh. Yeah, Grant Enfinger felt really good about that truck going into the day. Now he's starting to be a little more concerned with that thing. He said it's struggling on entry. He wants a little help during the next pit stop, of course. But Grant Enfinger is a guy that we know GMS shutting down at the end of the season. He said teams can go one of two ways. They can kind of fold or they can stay focused. And he said my crew chief Jeff Hensley has never been more focused than he is right now, guys. Great report, Sims, and I'll tell you about this 23 <laughs> truck. His struggle right now is real. I know he's in lap traffic, but he just can't make the moves I think he wants to, and it's taking him some while to cut through this, this traffic. You see Daniel Dye is next on his list. Inside of 10 laps to go in the first stage, nine remaining now. Look at Taylor Gray working his way through lap traffic. We saw the scoring pile on Tom Majeski up to the 11th spot. Don't think he's going to be able to get up and get stage points. He's almost five seconds behind Derek Kraus, but nonetheless, a great move by Tom Majeski. It has him back in contention for a win in this race. And it's not as much a knock on Majeski it is as it is a celebration of what Kraus is doing. You guys said it. That seven has been ridiculous today. Really, really fast as Kraus. And look at our chicklets. You see Tom Majeski there, the fastest truck. He's up to the 11th position. Some really strong trucks, including Matt Mills in the 51. He's been among our top five, and he's back in the 17th position. We saw him struggle in qualifying, felt like he had a good truck for the race, and that's the case. I love this. It just shows you the parity, how fast some of these trucks are that are back there fighting through traffic. There's that beautiful 51 truck for Mills. He had such a great run in this truck at Richmond. Top five finishes, career best. He's got top five speed today as well. Jeske again the faster truck on the racetrack in 11th. We saw Matt De Benedetto a few moments ago. He's already a lap down and he's not in the free pass spot. So he's certainly going to have his work cut out for him. That's that's a shame. That's a struggle for Matty D. There's another truck going to lap down Stuart Priest and we talked earlier in the qualifying show about the struggle bus he's been on for the last few weeks continues. Ferris mowers on the side of that 52 truck. There's some good, there's some trucks certainly in the grips of the 23 of Enfinger that may go a lap down to keep Stewart. There's Hager, Hangarani right there. That could take Stewart Friesen out of the free pass spot if Grant's able to get by that 61. Just ahead of Hangarani there, you see Brett Holmes in the 32 truck. He's 24th. Got six laps around this mile track. I think both these guys could be in jeopardy of losing a lap, and that's bad news for Friesen. Angarani was in that ARCA race earlier today, battled a lot of the time with Grant and Finger. Grant had never been here before, so he decided to try to run that ARCA Menards race as we see. Derek Krause down on the bottom yeah, trying, trying to, to get by Ben Rose, trying to grab another spot, move him up to ninth. That's got to be a great feeling for Krause, just passing folks. Started 25th, guys. Charged all the way inside the top 10. Ben Rhodes slides up the track there a bit. It's like Krause is loose. Four laps to go. Stage one at Milwaukee. In finger, three seconds in front of Sanchez as he continues to maneuver through the lap traffic. And we're watching the battle for ninth. We got Ben Rhodes, Derek Krause, and not too far behind them is Ty Majeski, who's trying to rally and get a stage point. I don't think he's going to be able to make up those 20 some truck links. He's behind that yeah. battle for the 10th spot. The most important thing for him, I think, is he's back. He's he's back in it. That's he's right. in contention for the win of this race. And they've been on pit road. They've made an adjustment. They know what that adjustment did to the truck, how it affected the handling of it. That'll give them more 
idea of how to adjust the truck when they come to pit road and get tires. And they didn't waste a set of tires when they made that pit stop. So great work by that team. You get, you get a restart to pick up some positions. You could pick up some ground on pit road. Bama buggies. He's currently Chase Purdy is eighth. And you can see it looks like finally Derek Krause is going to get around roads. He does. Derek Krause is not really racing for points, but he sure can take points away from somebody like Ben Rhodes. And the points are big for Rhodes, who came in just above the playoff cut line as he tries to advance onto the round of eight. And he slides back to 10th. Great battle with Chase Purdy in that four truck. Chase has really had a nice, solid year for KBM. Spencer Boyd there in the 12 truck. Giving these guys a little bit of an obstacle to get around as they race toward the end of this first stage. Final lap, opening stage at Milwaukee. And what a drive it's been for Grant Enfinger. And what a battle we have from eighth on back. And here's Enfinger closing on his teammate Raja Karuth. Going to put him a lap down. Nope, doesn't look like he will. Stays in line. Opening stage. Grant Enfinger wins it at Milwaukee. Sanchez is second. Taylor Gray, third. Heim gets Eckes for fourth. Fifth for Eckes. Hosovar, sixth. And the rest of the top ten, Sawalich, Kraus, Purdy, and Ben Rhodes. Majeski ends up 11th. Second stage win of the year for Enfinger. He also won at Gateway. That afternoon, he went on to win the race. Stage one in the books for the Craftsman Truck Series here in Milwaukee. Grant Enfinger dominates, leading every lap. Gets a playoff point, 10 stage points. Sanchez, good day. Heim, Eckes, Hosovar, Ben Rose, the others in the playoff category that got a nice payoff in regard to stage points in that opening stint of the race. And now the all important trip down pit road because track position is huge at Milwaukee. And that was huge, huge for Nick Sanchez who came in here two points above that line that Michael likes to talk about so much. Well I'll tell you that that was huge for all those playoff guys that got those stage points. You want to bank those and put it behind you and they did just that six of them did. Now it's time for pit stops Amanda. You're going to see that 98 making its way towards us. He told us ahead of this playoff season that our biggest competition in this playoff is going to be ourselves. Well those changes that they made during that first pit stop must have been great because look at him all the way up into the 11th spot after that just driving through the field no chassis adjustments here just tires and fuel and as we go over to the 11 of Corey Heim Scott Zipidelli told him there's going to be a big swing for you as he gets off of pit road they made a major adjustment on the track bar to get some rear grip into that truck Josh trouble there for the two getting out of the pit stall his biggest concern was he was struggling a bit laterally free in turn three and as far as the 23 of Grant and finger he said he was starting to struggle a bit on entry and exit they made a track bar and air pressure adjustment to help out your stage one winner guys great work for the 11 team plus three for Corey Heim he wins the race off pit road and Grant finger. finger to second yeah he was boxed in a bit had to slowly get out of his pit box a lot of action there you could see the jack drop on Majeski's truck before the service was done. Yeah, that's certainly going to hurt him. We showed Matt Mills in the race off pit road. Matt actually came down pit road before pit road opened. He will have to go to the back. Here's a pit stop for Majeski. As Michael said, watch that right side. Balls off the jack. Must not have had it all the way under there, or else somebody hit the handle. Maybe the rear tire changer. That's going to cost him a bunch of positions, though. It's our second caution of the day, ending stage one. Sean Hangarani got the free pass. The restart when we come back for stage two. Getting lined up, ready to go for stage two here at the Milwaukee Mile, doing the choose. Corey Heim won the race off pit road, takes the outside lane for the restart. And you can see coming to the choose here eventually will be Tom Majeski. He's made. <laughs> A couple of trips to the back and now one to the middle of the field. It's been quite the up and down day for that 98 truck. Trouble on pit road. Majeski worked his way all the way up to the 11th spot when the caution came out. But here he comes. He's going to come down pit road. We 
we talked about the fact that the truck fell off the jack. Then he's going to have another issue. It's already fallen off the jack, but you see the right front tire changer. Tell him, Majeski, he's got to turn the wheel to the left so he can get, get in there to get that wheel off. That could have been a function of it falling off the jack. It just turned the wheel a little bit in his hands as that happened anyway. The result is he's back outside the top 20 as we're coming to the green. Look at the numbers. The box score for him <laughs> is going to be interesting at the end of the day. Number of trucks passed maybe yeah. today could break the record yeah. here at Milwaukee. We'll start outside of Brett Holmes there in that 32 truck. Brett stayed on the lead lap during that first stage. Hyman and Finger. Row one as we get it rolling. Stage two at Milwaukee. Majeski with a little bit of push to the, excuse me, Christian Eckes with a little bit of a push to the back of Corey Hine. What about William Swalich up there in the top three? Quick caution, yellow is out. Oh no, Brad Perez in that 30 truck. Greg Van Alst, the 20 truck for Tyler Young. That's pretty good contact for both those trucks. And we ought to, we already saw one of Tyler's trucks get a lot of damage with Josh Balicki losing right front tire. He's out of the race. And when the wind net comes down for Greg Van Alst, he's going to be out as well. And I'm sure same situation for Brad Perez. You can see Brad's got all four corners of that 30 truck torn up. Early caution stage one. Early caution in our second stage as well. AMR safety team is there checking things out on the 30 and 20 trucks. Let's go back to the restart, see what happened. Oh, something did, went wrong with the Van Alst. Did he bounce off the inside wall possibly? I, I don't know, it looked like maybe the, did it, could, could the throttle have hung for a bit? Could, he shot across the racetrack. Maybe he bounced, you know, misjudged it, bounced off the inside wall, or possibly forced into the inside wall, and it careened him out towards the outside of the racetrack. Nothing Brad could have done there. This Greg Van All-Star Daytona winner from earlier this year in the Arkham Menard Series, Amanda. That's exactly what Brad Perez asked his crew chief what happened there. They reported that they think that Greg may have blown a tire and just kind of took him out. It's kind of a bummer for Brad. It's only his second ever start on an oval. I talked to him prior to the race. He's been spending a lot of time with Rajah Karuth. They've been trading information back and forth. Brad Perez, uh, by trade, is a sports car driver, so he's been helping Rajah on the road courses. But looking to gain some knowledge here on the ovals will be a bummer for Brad Perez. Seen Brad racing a little bit this year in the Xfinity series as well. Third caution comes out. Restart stage two. Perez, Van Alst, done for the day. Corey Heim is your race leader. Saturday, it's baseball night in America on Fox. Bryce Harper in the Phillies clash with Christian Yelich of the Brewers. In an NL showdown, or you get the Twins against Corey Seager and the Rangers. Catch every play Saturday night, 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. And since we're talking Brewers leading the NL Central, there's their ballpark not too far away. Yeah, been there for, you know, for a few games over the years. American Family Field, they get some... Great crowds there, and we've got a good one here this afternoon. Yeah, infield's full of race fans as well. It's always popular. I don't, I'm not sure why we stopped coming here I'm, back in, after 2009. I'm just glad we're back. Me too. Beautiful day. Lots of great race fans, and we're seeing some great action on the track. In Milwaukee today, and the fun really just beginning when it comes to the playoffs in the Craftsman Truck Series. IRP goes to Ty Majeski. We stay in the Midwest this afternoon. From here, we're off to Kansas. Well, still staying in the Midwest in yeah. Kansas. And then we're going to go south to Bristol. What about the little Bristol Talladega combination? Does that scream NASCAR or what? Wild card, wild card back to back. They set the championship four at the Homestead Miami Speedway. And then it's out west. 
to run for the title in the desert on November 3rd, a Friday night at Phoenix. I think we're going to fly, though, from Homestead yeah. to Phoenix. I don't think we're going to ride in the truck. I'm not sure the three of us would get along <laughs> making it from Bristol to Talladega, much less Miami to Phoenix. <laughs> We've tried a little bit of everything in this job, <laughs> weathered a few storms along the way, and always have a good time talking about our trucks. See if we can get this second stage rolling. A little bit of trouble getting going here. Such a shame for Brad Perez and Greg Van Oss. That was a big crash into turn one. Yeah, we looked at that during the commercial break, and it looked possibly maybe a throttle hung on Greg Van Oss's truck. When it did, then he locked the brakes up, and that just drove that truck straight into Brad Perez. Certainly nothing Brad could do about it. And then if the throttle hung, nothing Greg Van Alls could do about it. Going to be 39 laps to go in stage two when we return to the green flag. Hyman Infinger on row one. Eckes up there. How about William Sawalich inside of row two for the restart? The 16 year old making his presence known. How cool is that? 16 and up there <laughs> contending for a win. Host of our Taylor Gray there as well. Eckes with, with another bump to Corey Heim. Corey Heim out with a lead. Now side by side for second with Grant Enfinger and Eckes. Eckes said, I'll, I'll take me some of that outside lane. Nice move by Enfinger to slide through, get to second as they come through turns three and four. Now Sawalich is going to try to move to the inside of Eckes in that battle for third. Whoa, he drove her down in there, didn't he? Sure did. That thing's going to stick, too. It's a strong move by the one truck. Not going to be able to clear Eckes, though. Eckes is going to fight back on the outside. Good battling here. Certainly is. All the way back through the top 10, side to side, are several trucks. Three wide. Wow. <laughs> I don't have a great feeling about three wide. That's Majeski on the outside of that. Majeski oh, that's Connor Jones. Connor Jones. That's yep. Connor Jones in the 66. Oh, Stewart. Up in front of Jake Garcia, had to check up on the gas. There's Matty D trying to get a lap back. Right now, Stuart Fries in the red 52 Ferris truck is the lead truck one lap down. That's who Matt would need to get ahead of in case the caution were to come out. Barely squeezes up in front of Daniel Dye and behind Connor Jones. Check that scoring pylon. Ty Majeski going to be highlighted in green. That's because he's won a race locked into the next round. Not because he's on go today, but he is on go this afternoon <laughs> from 22nd to 14th since we returned to the green flag. That's him right in front of his teammate Ben Rhodes. Majeski in the 98. Bailey Curry pushing Ben Rhodes up off the corner. Now three wide with Tyler Ankrum, the 16 on the inside. Dean Thompson trying to fill a hole there in that five, five truck. He's had a fast truck today. You can see up ahead, Majeski to the bottom, gets around the 15 of Gray. He's now 12th, Michael. So he, he comes from the back, gets to 11th, has the problems on pit road at the end of the stage, restarts outside the top 20, and here he is looking at a position in the top 10, but Tanner Gray says, I'll, I'll come back by in the 98. Yeah, it looked like Ty was able to drive by Tanner fairly easily, then Tanner fights back. Tanner sees his brother up ahead in seventh. Taylor, <laughs> he wants to go get some of that action. Oh, a hard angle to get off the corner. Nice momentum for Majeski from the high side. Zane Smith will be the next guy on the hit list for Majeski. What about our man Matt Crafton? He's driven inside the top 10. He's got a strong truck today trying to take that eighth position away from Chase Purdy. He just gets better and better all day. Good run for Matt. Yeah, Matt was outside the top 10 in that stage one. Did not get any stage points. Matt, the only driver in the field today 
that was racing here the last time we came to Milwaukee with the trucks in 2009. So let's look at the ages of all the, the playoff drivers and how old they were the last time we raced here. This is maybe the graphic of the afternoon. Our leader, Corey Heim, was, was six years old. <laughs> maybe, maybe starting first grade, possibly kindergarten. He's just a baby. Just a baby. And Matt Crafton, 33 years of age, but man, still got pace, just drives around Purdy up to the eighth position. This 88 truck is on it today. Let's go back a few more years. Back in 1996 was Thor Sports' first ever race here in the truck series with Terry Cook. Been such a great addition to the sport. Duke and Ronda Thorson, Matt Crafton, three-time champion, always a playoff contender, Amanda. And I'm so surprised to see him running in the black there in the corners. He said that that is a no-go zone here this weekend. So maybe that the track is evolving to these trucks. But I think Matt's truck is also evolving to him in practice and in qualifying. He just said simply, we're terrible. So the adjustments have been made to keep Matt crafted in this hunt. I like what I'm seeing last time by Amanda. He was the third fastest truck, and he's battling there behind the 17 of Taylor Gray. That means if he can get around Gray, I think he might be the fastest truck on the track. And, and one thing I've learned, never doubt Matt Crafton. We weren't sure he'd make it in the playoffs. He does, and now here he is making a rally one more time. Corey Heim, your race leader. We're going side by side. greater Toyota let's go places that's my team out there if our network goes down lives are at stake our comms have to work or the mission won't that's why we partner with Verizon Frontline the network that truly prioritizes first responders so we don't worry about getting through and they're the most reliable 5g network in America out here, reliability is everything. Extreme or routine, Verizon Frontline delivers. The number one network choice in public safety. Learn more. It's your mission. It's your Verizon. The stars of NASCAR return to Texas for a playoff showdown. Competitors, outlaws, rivals. All fighting to be the lone star. Experience the No Limits action. Racing, camping, live music, food, fun, and more. Sunday, September 24th. Lock in tickets at TexasMotorSpeedway.com. The most anticipated reunion of the summer is here. In the trumpets. As John Cena returns home to SmackDown. It's go time! Oh my God! Cena's here! The man, the myth, the legend. Cena is coming to town! SmackDown's biggest event of the summer. This is awesome. There is just no stopping Cena. Oh my God. All new Friday Night SmackDown, sponsored by Progressive at 8, 7 Central on Fox. It all comes down to Martinsville, and the whole family is invited to see the action. Get your tickets now at martinsvillespeedway.com. A nice little two-truck battle for the lead here at Milwaukee for the Craftsman Truck Series. Corey Heim won the race off pit road ending stage one. Had the top spot. Ran Enfinger, who dominated that opening stint of the race, is hung around, hung around, and he wants to go back on point. They're side by side, coming off of turn four. Not able to clear Corey Heim. Grant really likes that outside, really got some good momentum from the outside, now switches over to the inside. That's fun to watch, isn't it? He's going way up the hill when he's running by himself. Now he's trying to pinch it down and make it work on the bottom. You can see that truck gets a little bit sideways there. The veteran that Grant is, he's not going to slide that rear tire too much. He's going to calm down, size him up again, and make another run at him. And let's give some credit to Corey Heim. You touched on how good he's been lately. Today marks the 11th straight race where he's led laps this season. Just remarkable the campaign he's put together first year full time. 
in the last 11 race, last 10 races, averaging almost 50 points a race. 60 is the most points you can score, and he's averaged almost 50 points a race over that 10 race span. Won the regular season championship after missing that race due to illness at St. Louis. Came into this race 47 points to the good when it comes to advancing. Obviously, if he, he wins today, he's locked in anyway, but I, I think he could do it on points. I mean, just remarkable what this guy has done this year. I'm just really impressed with Grant today. He's had so much speed. We talked earlier about his success at St. Louis, and he thinks this track drives a lot like St. Louis. Well, Jeff Hensley and that team must have brought the same setup because it's handling like it did there as well. I think Corey Heim has been alerted to the, alerted to the fact that Grant's been running a little higher. I think now he is moving up the racetrack a little bit more, and that's helping him. You see Grant's another, at least a half a truck with higher than Corey Heim right now. Is Majeski grabbing another spot from Chase Purdy that moves Majeski up into the 10th spot. Top 10 for the first time today after struggles all over the place, but a really fast number 98 truck. You know, I've been watching Majeski over the last number of laps. He pulled up to Zane Smith or got in position behind Zane Smith and really hasn't been able to do anything with Zane. Zane, Zane moved down ahead of Chase Purdy. Zane right now in the ninth spot. That's him right in front of Majeski, but they've been matching lap for lap speed wise. Just you, ahead of him there, you see Crafton trying to get another spot. He's finally closed in on Taylor Gray. Here comes Majeski. All these trucks in the top 10. To everybody, Majeski, these stage points, oh, so critical, especially for Matt Crafter right now in that battle for seventh with Gray. Nice day for Tricon. You got Heim leading, Swalich up there in fourth, and Taylor Gray, another rookie in seventh right now, trying to hang on to that position with Matt Crafton behind him, and Himes got company again. Another rally being mounted by Infinger. Himes trying to hold on to that position as well. I would like to say it's a bit of a surprise to see Swalich up in the top five, but it's not. Every time he gets behind the wheel of his trucks, he runs it in the top ten. This is definitely the strongest he's been. There you can see our pylon with the results so far, running positions of their four trucks. I'm glad you didn't say that it's surprising what Sawalich is doing because I did that, made that mistake when we were racing at Richmond and Phil quickly corrected me. Actually, I wish you would have done it so he would have corrected you as well. <laughs> I, it took me a while to get my confidence back after that. Boy, Grant all over the back of this 11 truck. You wonder if Grant could get by. Boy, how could he drive away? I think definitely he drives away if he does. You know, only 18 laps to go in this stage. I think Grant would love to get that lead back, not only to get the playoff point and the stage points, just but to come to pit road first and possibly have an advantage on pit road. You want control, don't you? As a driver, you want control of the Total race. Total control. Total control. But we talked about the importance of track position and how big of a role pit road could play today, and, and that's what we're seeing right here. Heim was able to get the top spot off the pit lane from Infinger, and that's why we have the battle in front of us that we do for the lead. Right side of your screen, Crafton has been able to get by Taylor Gray. Now Taylor's going to fight back on the outside. Zane Smith is right behind this side-by-side -side battle. What the heck happened there? Crafton know. drove around the inside of him, and just like nothing, Gray was able to pull to the outside. See if Matt slides up here, takes that groove away. How about Grant trying to grab that lead back from Corey Heim? He's going to do it. I think he's got him clear to give Grant Infinger the lead for a moment. Corey Heim's going to try to do the crossover, not going to be able to work. Grant Infinger started on the pole, led the first 60 laps. We talked about the exchange on pit road. Heim led the next 34, but Alabama's own Grant Infinger is back on point at Milwaukee. 15 to go, stage two. It's Infinger, Hein, Eckes, Sawalich, and Sanchez, your top five. Drivers, start your engine! For millions of young people, Boys and Girls Club of America provides a safe place where science, technology, and NASCAR come together. Where the green flag waves on potential careers and the skills learned here excite inspire and build the foundation towards a better tomorrow after all great futures start here grant infinger leads at milwaukee 
10 laps to go, stage two. And the Clean Harbor's 175. Second place right now, Corey Heim. He's one second in arrears. Let's update the top two. We begin with Josh. Yeah, Adam, and as you mentioned, Grant Enfinger, your leader again. And even when he was behind the 11, the team was telling him, hey, you're faster than the 11. He was patient. He tried several different lines, finally able to get around him. Once he did get around the 11, he came over the radio and said, hey, this truck is better than it was during the first run when he did win stage number one. He said it was a little bit tight, but he feels good about what he's got, Amanda. Josh, we've been talking about some of Corey Heim's stats this season. Well, I told him ahead of the race, the stat here at Milwaukee is that no driver has one here starting below the eighth position and he just smiled at me and said well it's a good thing that I'm starting eighth but he said the theme of the race here today is going to be saving tires maybe that was on display here when Grant made that pass you know to that point we have seen the long green flag run play out we had an early caution stage one early caution stage two after that it's been all about what you can do over the long haul yeah, it's so important. Remember that number 34. That's how many laps Corey Heimlet. That's how many laps it took Grant Enfinger to wrestle the lead away from after losing it on pit road from to Corey Heim. Matt De Benedetto has been in the free pass position all of this whole stage, but that's getting ready to go away, Phil. This is a, a tough break. He needs a caution flag right now because Josh. He's getting ready to, to be second in line to get the free pass. Tough day for this 25 truck. Yeah, it's a tough day, and the, it, what a difference a day makes. Because I talked to Matty D yesterday, and he felt really good about his truck. Told me he had a top 10 truck. Told me maybe even a truck that could contend for a win. Then today, much different. That truck has been just way too tight. He's been battling with the throttle all day long, and he just can't push it the way he wants. And this is a guy that was telling me, hey, we don't need to be better than the rest of the field. It's just those playoff drivers. We need to be better than two of them over the next two races to advance to the next round. But he's not able to get what he wants out of this race today, guys. Yeah, and right behind him, here comes trouble again. Put him two laps down. If Grant Enfinger can get there, it's going to be close, Phil. A lot of the crew chiefs agreed with what Josh was saying, that that was one of the best trucks yesterday. Don't know, maybe they have some sort of an issue, but as you mentioned, he certainly doesn't want that yellow truck behind him to get by him before the end of this stage. Nine of our ten playoff drivers are 11th or better, and Matt is struggling. And he came in below the playoff cut line. So not a ton of margin for error when you talk about that 25 team making a playoff for the very first time. Matt won last year in the postseason but was not championship eligible. Got it done at Talladega Super Speedway. They've had a wonderful year but unfortunately a bit behind when it comes to how things are going here this afternoon. We see the 42 of Josevar. He's taken over that fourth spot. We saw Sawalich in the one right side of your screen battling Christian Eckes. For that spot, Eckes was able to drive away, and now Hosabar is coming up to try to grab that third spot from Eckes. Circle the 42. Oh, Good Somebody's on the long run. Boy, a bit of a bobble there. That was tight. Lemke in the 33. You could see the damage on the side of that truck. Got into the outside wall. NASCAR keeps it clean and green right now as Daniel Dice closes in the back of the 33. Looks like he's okay. Looks like the tires are up, at least for now, for Lemke. Look at the gap now for Enfinger. He'll see three laps to go in the stage. This time around, the advantage over two seconds. Heim, almost four, a little over four seconds in front of third place, Christian Eckes. Haley Deegan there, just ahead of Enfinger. She's the next truck to go a lap down. Grant's going to move to the inside. Three laps to go in this stage. She and Connor Jones running along there. Man, he's fast, isn't he? Woo, through the center of the corner. That truck has to be turning for him to be able to do that. Update on our friend Tom Majeski after his up and down day. Second fastest truck last time by, and he's up to the seventh position. We saw Grant running that extremely high line during the Arkham Menards race, and that was one of the reasons for him to run that Arkham Menards race. Had never been here before. What can he learn about this racetrack? He was the guy that ran the highest in that Arca race, even though, ooh, a little bit loose there, a little bit of a bobble. But he's making it work here tonight, or this afternoon. One lap to go, second stage. In finger, won the first stage, trying to get a sweep for the second time in his career. This for third, Eckes and Hosovar. 
championship contenders here battling for a spot inside the top three here in stage two of Milwaukee. Look how high they're going. Must be getting the word from the spotters. Going without up there. Without a doubt. Grant's making it work, guys, <laughs> and he's the fastest truck. Get out the broom. Grant Infinger came to play. Wins the pole, wins stage one, and he takes stage two as well. Last time he pulled off the sweep of a pair of stages. Got to go back to 2019 when he delivered in St. Louis. Hyde, who led the early portion of stage two, was second. Ekis, Hosevar, Sawalich, the top five. A championship is on the line. The next step in our quest to the title today at the Milwaukee Mile. Welcome back to the Milwaukee Mile. Those Craftsman trucks are ready for their pit stops at the end of stage two. You see Ty Majeski right there taking some fuel. He's not going to make any chassis adjustments to the truck. Fuel to the truck is great in traffic, but what a day for the 98 to bounce back from what they have had. And then moving on over to the 38 of Zane Smith. Kind of been quiet here in the playoffs. Said that it, this season has felt like a grind, but this truck was as loose as it was in Richmond earlier today. They're working on finding some grip, Josh. Impressive run so far for the one of William Sawalich. He said his biggest issue is getting too free, and he needs a little more drive off as far as the 19 of Christian Eckes. He said he needs more drive, needs more stability. He needs that truck similar to what he had at IRP. We had a runner-up finish, guys. Eckes gets two spots, wins the race off pit road, and for the second straight time, Grant Infinger leads gets trapped in. He lost three spots this time back to the fourth position. Same thing happened to Majeski. Looked like a pretty solid pit stop. Then I think he was blocked in. It looked like maybe Grant leading the race could have maybe stopped a little shorter in his box. You can see the angle he has right here. You see the four truck with the back end hanging out. When they finish the stop, there's nothing that Grant could do other than just back up. But you saw the back of his truck. It was really at the back line. Looked, but, but you see the front of, of the four truck at, at, right at the front line. So up, small pit stops. I mean, small, small pit stalls at Milwaukee. You know, when when you're leading, maybe you just come in and angle out a little bit better. But like you said, Phil, small stalls, just a bad break. Infinger came into this race 24 points above the cut line. Gets all 20 stage points available in the first two stages today. Heim with a good afternoon. Same for Eka Sanchez. Double digits when it comes to points scored. Hosevar got 12. Majeski and Crafton also scoring some points. The final stage on the way on FS1. We're getting ready to see some crazy action. Might get chewed up and spit out on this one. That was a real nail biter. They're all over each other. What a great racetrack. What a great night this is. For the first time since 2009, the Craftsman Truck Series racing at the Milwaukee Mile. It's race two in the playoffs. Chasing down the title in 2023 this afternoon. It's the Clean Harbors 175. Pit Road has been a busy place today. Could very well decide the outcome of this race. Been a challenge for the 98 of Tom and Jessica. We saw what happened that on the first end of the stage. Watch here. He takes off, goes forward. He's blocked in by Corey Heim. Has to stop in reverse and then take off again. And he's going to restart 10th. I thought he had a pretty solid pit stop. And then he spent probably four or five seconds trying to get backed up so he can get around the 11 of Corey Heim. Doubled up. He's on the outside in the 10th position. This is when you got to pounce, though, Phil. These guys get side by side, three and four wide, maybe. Try to grab some spots early. We've seen how difficult it is for even Grant, the fastest truck, to make a pass. In finger led 79 laps today, 34 for Heim. Christian Eckes with the field in tow for the first time this afternoon. He has control of the race. He takes the outside lane. Hosevar to his inside. Here we go. Final stage at Milwaukee. Hosevar has just been getting stronger and stronger all day Up on the front row. He's going to be determined to get that lead off turn two. He's going to get it, too. He's going to clear Christian Eckes. What a restart. 
fourth leader of the afternoon, Carson Hosevar, and a big mess behind him. Look at Derek Krause driving hard on the outside, right behind Majeski, who moves around or trying to move around his teammate Ben Rhodes. Got Give a shout out to Dean Thompson there in that five truck. He's joining this battle for a top 10 spot. The best Ben's been all day. Majeski going really wide, trying to move around the 15 of Tanner Gray. Look at that scoring pylon. And all the playoff drivers that find themselves in contention. If any of those drivers in the top five win today, automatically locked in to the round of eight. How about Matt Crafton trying to drive around Ty Majeski? been a great day for that 88 truck. He's proven that this truck can Whoa, look at Oh, Majeski way wide. Almost out of the ballpark. Corey Hammer on the high side of Crafton. A lot of action going on. Majeski's truck just hasn't looked right since the restart. If you're just joining us, Ty Majeski had problems in the inspection line, had to start today's race in the rear, had to make a pass-through penalty once we went under the green flag, was able to get an early caution, stayed on the lead lap, drove it up to the 11th position, end of stage one, lost some track position on the pit lane, restarted stage two, 22nd, was able to drive it up to seventh, and once again, they lost some spots on pit road. 11th right now is Majeski, who won at Indianapolis, and he's locked into the round of eight. Let's go to Amanda. right and he's doing just that made a lot of great moves after starting outside the top 20 and just been hammered down all day long it's all about winning for this seven truck so how much is that 88 truck of Matt Crafton improved I think he finished about 18th at the end of the first stage J Rod has got that truck tuned up here a little bit and I like the line match running you got to go where they ain't you know everybody's running up high he's trying to squeeze it to the bottom he's making it work but he's gonna lose a spot after cutting low there in turn two that's an Owensboro Kentucky phrase, right? Yeah. Go where they ain't. Yeah, you got to go where they ain't. <laughs> kind of like hit them where they ain't, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Look at that. Really low. Caution is out. Fifth one of the afternoon. Spencer Boyd, the 12 truck around. Not, not any damage, it doesn't appear. No well, major damage for sure. It's deja vu, right? You have an early caution stage one, you run to the finish of the stage. Early caution stage two, run to the finish. Here we are, final stage, yellow flag early again for the 12. I think Spencer was just by himself, it looked like. See the 22 of Joshua Ram do a nice job avoiding Spencer. We'll step aside, just over 50 laps to go. Carson Hosevar in charge at Milwaukee. Tonight, the NFL is back on Fox in the final week of the preseason as the Texans take on the Saints. Don't miss any of the action tonight on Fox, 8 o'clock Eastern time. That, that music, it just gets mm -hmm. me going. My lines look pretty good against the Panthers. It's the preseason, Phil. Oh, no, okay, okay. He's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, well, just hold good, your horses. Good good Give point. us a month or two. Did your lines look good or did our Panthers look bad? <laughs> I, think, I prefer to think the Lions look good. I'll <laughs> let you two discuss that as we check in with Amanda. Well, you're going to see a couple of uh, Zane Smith crew members over the wall. The tires are on the wall as well. They were discussing whether they were going to make a pit stop here. We were he hearing that they have called it off, but Zane relayed to his team, this is the worst truck I have ever had. I think something is broken in this thing. Well, and... Guys, I just want to get you aware. You might have to throw a Hail Mary if you got a problem like that. We talked about the extra set of tires. Maybe you grab them and hope there's no more cautions. Just do something. I was listening to Chris Lawson, the crew chief for this team. He said, I'm not a good points racer. I like to win races, and that might mean you have to change things up. We'll have to follow along and see. I'm not surprised they considered it there. We'll have to see what they do. And most of these teams have two sets of tires laying on pit road. 
looking at the points Ty Majeski is in with his win at Indianapolis and while I say in I mean he's advanced to the round of a Carson Hosovar in position to advance now as the race leader Heim at plus 62 Eckes plus 57 in finger with a great day plus 46 all of those drivers feeling really good about themselves six points separating Ben Rhodes and his teammate the three time champion Matt Crafton at the cut line and the driver that really has gone in the wrong direction today we've talked a lot about him Matt De Benedetto minus 28 you talk about throwing a Hail Mary he might have to do that at Kansas in two weeks time in the race that will end this round and decide who moves on. Yeah, it's too late for this race. Two laps down, never had a chance to get the free pass. He's right now mired back on the 27th spot. So it's going to be a bad day for Matt. But again, he can certainly go to Kansas and win that race and lock himself into that next round. A couple of penalties here. 51 of Matt Mills, 43 of Daniel Dye. They start at the rear. Free pass under this, our fifth caution, goes to Haley Deegan. Restart, 46 to go. Hosovar Eckes up front. Remember how strong Hosovar was on that last restart. See if he can repeat. Took the lead down on the bottom when he restarted second. Last restart takes the top this time and is able to hang on to the lead still. Don't sleep on the rookie, Nick Sanchez. Been right there all day long and hanging in third right now. The snarling pack of trucks, isn't it? Three wide. How about Nick Sanchez gonna grab that second spot from Eckes? Heard him talk earlier. He really liked what he felt in his truck yesterday during practice. How about that seven truck of Derek Krause right now running in the fifth spot. Put him up to the top five. Corey Heim diving low looking for a spot. It's Ben Rhodes trying to get underneath the 15 of Tanner Gray. And the bottom feeder Matt Crafton. He's going to be three wide. Whoa, contact. Ben Rhodes getting sideways. That was Tanner Gray that hit him coming off the corner. Nice move for boarding that by Matt Crafton. I think he sensed there was something going on. Is he going to grab two spots because of that? Looks like he's going to. He can clear the 15 of Tanner Gray, and he does. Swalich was there trying to take advantage as well in the one. Watch this mess. Ben Rhodes just not able to keep his truck off of the gray number 15. That's actually red, white, and blue. <laughs> is red it bad? 15. Is it bad that the next words out of my mouth were going to be, it's actually red, white, and blue? I really got to watch what I say up here. <laughs> Majeski trying to get around Sawalich. It's a battle for the 10th spot. Majeski just has not had the strength. He, through the center of the corner, look at, he just slides up to the high side. We saw that ever since the restart at the end of the stage. You can see where all the Thor Sport trucks are running, left side of your screen. I'm not trying to be mean, but I would have lost the bet if you had asked me to pick who was going to be the best from Thor Sport today, and it had been Matt Crafton. I just would not have anticipated that. And we've talked about where he was yesterday in practice, where he qualified earlier today, but, but give him credit. He just does not go away. I'm just not sure what went wrong for this 90 Majeski, whether whether they made an adjustment that, adjustment that took him the wrong way or, or whether something's going on with that truck. Currently outside the top 10, you see our fastest trucks are all in the top five right now. And this might be one of the best of them all. That seven truck you're talking about, right, Michael? Yeah. Oh, Sawalich brings out our caution for the sixth time today. Tough break. You see him moving around in the truck. Tough break for Sawalich, but this may be the time. We're going to have about 40 laps to go for that Hail Mary to come in and put some tires on, even though I don't. We don't have that many laps on the tires. Only what about uh, 20 laps on these tires and 25 trucks on the lead lap. A lot of trucks on the lead lap for sure. Yeah, we put a lot down in that first stage around a lot of green flag laps. But since then, there's been quite a few cautions putting more trucks back on the lead lap. Ah, uh, just got a little bit loose inside of Ben Rhodes. See what Ty Majeski saw here from his onboard camera. Ben, ben gave him plenty of room. He yeah. had the entire 
blacker part of the racetrack, plus some of the gray part. And William just got a little bit loose. Good day for William Swalich, won the ARCA race from the pole, but unfortunately in the wall here in the track event, bringing out the caution. This reminder, help people affected by the Hawaii wildfires. Your donation enables the Red Cross to prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from these disasters. Go to redcross.org slash foxforward to help. Devastation. 37 laps to go for the Craftsman Truck Series here at Milwaukee. It's race two in the playoffs of this opening round and a bit of a strategy play here. We wondered, will they pit? Will they won't split decision when you look at the drivers running up front? I wouldn't call it a Hail Mary, but certainly differing agendas here. And that's because there's another set of tires laying there that some people might want later in this affair. But man, Phil, 26 trucks on the lead lap. That's a tall That's a order if you pit really late. It's going to be really interesting because our leader, Carson Hosevar, stayed out along with Derek Krause, Tanner Gray in that red, white, and blue truck. We only had 12 lap, green flag laps, so I think that's why Carson Hosevar says, well, you know, I think we can stay out and obviously feel cool. But you see the 99 slowing down. That's because he was speeding on pit road. Tough, tough break. This late in the going for Ben Rhodes, one of our playoff contenders. Lawless Island got the free pass. 45 is scored in the 25th position. And you see the, the number of laps since these drivers were last on pit road. Now, we've talked about Hosevar, Kraus, Tanner Gray. They pitted at the end of stage two. But behind them, Ankrum, Hangarani, Carruth, Deegan, they made a pit stop on that last caution. So their tires are a little bit better yet. And then obviously those drivers that just came down and Christian Eckes, the first of that bunch, being shown eighth on our leaderboard. This is going to get good. We've seen a lot of three wide racing. Probably going to see four wide now. Will we have comers and goers? I think it's, it's going to be intense. I like the way the 42 restarts. I think that's going to be a big advantage to him if he's able to get out front while those guys with fresher tires all battle amongst each other. Could be what wins him the race with yeah. just 36 laps to go. Clean air certainly doesn't hurt here, and he's going to have it more than likely. But that seven truck of Derek Krause. As far back as he started in this race, he made nice moves from the initial start. Now fought his way up into the top five. Now going to restart on the inside of the front row. In the second half of stage one and stage two, had a green flag field. Will we get that here in the final stage? Yeah, I don't we, feel it. A little more <laughs> pushing and shoving, I think, now. <laughs> I I'm would not, say. I'm not feeling it at all, Adam. We, we always say it. Cautions breed cautions. Restart 35 remaining. There goes Hosevar. Raj out going to try to make it through. Wyatt's going to lose some ground now. Oh, there's contact in the back. I don't know how they made it through that. I Is saw that, some smoke. Was that in finger in the middle of that? He's now on the inside. Oh, there's trouble. We get the answer to our question. Yes, there will be another oh, caution. Oh, no. Ah, tough break for a playoff contender, Nick Sanchez. He came down pit road, restarted right around the 10th the position. The two is in the wall after having such a good stage one, stage two. See the damage to the left front. He can get that truck refired. He's trying to refire it right now. It's going to go a lap down with yeah. the, all the other problems he's going to have. Won't, won't start, I don't guess, Phil. Watch this mess. He's on the outside of Ben Finger. Corey Heim is going to going to run it. He actually had to slow. Sanchez slowed for Haley Deegan and Corey Heim ran in the back of him and turned him around. Wow. You see Nick was almost on the rear bumper of the 13 truck of Haley Deegan. And Corey Heim I don't think was expecting him to be that slow at that point. Watch this mess off of turn two. I don't know how we made it through all of this. See Corey Heim squeezed into the outside wall by the two truck of Nick Sanchez. You don't think that was a little payback, do you, Phil? I, I didn't think so when I first saw it. I don't know. I think it was a combination of of the two of Sanchez slowing because of the 13 of Haley Deegan. Yeah, she had stayed out. 
on a little bit older tires. Long way to go in the playoffs. If that was payback, we could be putting a little rivalry together here. I don't think there was any malicious intent right there at all. I Wouldn't really guess. don't. I don't think so either. 33 remaining at Milwaukee. Hosevar, Tanner Gray, Kraus, the top three, back in a moment on FS1. You know you're winning when you get to go back to Milwaukee and NASCAR. It's the playoffs, and you get a day like this. All sunshine, high temperature, 70 degrees. This is absolute perfection. And a doubleheader. <laughs> That's right. A lot of sweatshirts up in those grandstands today. There you see Sanchez on and off pit road. He's been able to stay on the lead lap. Don't know how much damage that two truck has. Certainly made contact with the left side to the outside safer barrier. Looks like he's going to be able to continue without too much problem. Yeah, I think the key is if that steering wheel is still straight, if he didn't hit that left front tire too hard and the steering wheel is still straight, he might, might be able to pass some trucks. Right now, he has shown seven points above the playoff cut line. One of those drivers that's going to have to perform in 12 days when we head to the heartland. It's the final race in the opening round, doing battle at Kansas. And after this night is complete, two of our championship contenders will be eliminated. Mm, love that racetrack at Kansas. I think that's one of the driver's favorite racetracks now, the way it races. You can run from the bottom all the way to the top. Just such a cool venue to head to Kansas. So much to do in that area. They built a casino there for me. I mean, for, <laughs> for people. <laughs> Friday, September 8th. All the coverage on FS1 begins 8 o'clock Eastern time. See those lights go out on the safety truck? We're going to choose it up, Adam. Ooh, look out. Whoa. Was that that kiss that almost was. hit the triangle there? That was close. That red triangle is what these drivers have to avoid when they pick inside or out. This is so close. Watch this white truck right here. Well, the last second decides to go to the inside. Oh my good. He by inches. By inches he missed that. He scared it. Yes, he did. <laughs> no harm, no foul there. Eck is the best of those drivers that came down and pitted at lap 137 for this restart. William Swalich was a lap down after crashing moments ago. Gets the free pass. He's back on the lead lap, being scored in 26th. What about Hangarani up in the top five here? Great job. Wow. See if he can hang on. He pitted on lap 113. Much fresher tires all over him. You're 16 years old. You've never done this before. You've got to run two races in one day. He might spend some time a lap down. Just go figure it out. Then he has. <laughs> Hosevar, Tanner Gray, front row. Restart comes 28 to go. Nice push there by Derek Krause on the 42. Hanger on you, a little slow on the restart. Empinger is going to jump to the high side and make it three wide. Four, Four wide. wide. Are you kidding me? We knew that was coming. And here comes Corey Heim. Sticking his nose in in turn three. Matt Crafton really fast around the bottom of the track. Can he clear the 61? And Finger knows how that third lane works. He's been up there all day. He's going to stay up there, try to get around Ankrum, that 16 truck. Eck is up to fourth. Mentioned he's on those fresher tires. In Finger is as well, and he's beginning to rally as Hosevar pulls away with the race lead. Enfinger loses a little bit of ground through the center of the corner, but he makes it up on momentum up off the corner from that high side. Trying to go around Tanner Gray now. You see Tanner Gray working the wheel, just a little nudge there. Uh, Tanner Gray said, what do you mean he's on the outside of me? I was on the outside. <laughs> There's Eckes, the 19, Enfinger, the 23, side by side for third. And that might be the race for the win only because they're on those fresher tires whoever establishes themselves here might be the front runner at the end in finger gets the spot regardless of what happens we have to give a call to that seven truck of Derek Cross for the job he's done watch the wiggle by the 15 with the 23 of in finger right around the outside of him what about Tyler Ankrum up there battling inside the top 10 he's having a good day there's that 16 truck with 
Corey Heim down to the bottom. Corey's going to be able to clear the 15 of Tanner Gray as well. And here comes Majeski in that 98. <laughs> I was going to say, guess who's back? Ty Majeski. What a day it's been for this 98 truck. Both Majeski and High, part of that group that came down pit road, got that fresh set of tires, lap 137. 25 laps to go. With Carson Hosevar out front on those older tires, I don't think changing tires this late in the going is going to be able to work for some of these teams if they decide, we talk about the Hail Mary, if they decide to do that. If the caution comes out again, I don't see that working. Yeah, I think our pitting is done for this race. Carson Hosevar is going to have to make do with a, about 20 lap older tires. His best friend right now is Derek Krause because he gives him a little bit of insulation but that insurance policy is now gone because in finger gets around the seven and now all he sees is clear racetrack between himself and reclaiming the top spot. How about that 42 Josh. Yeah, guys, and Carson came over the radio a couple of minutes ago during that caution and said based off of practice yesterday, he felt like the tires wear really fast, but after that, they level out, so they feel really good about the tires, about the truck they had, and they valued the track possession. He said he didn't want to get caught up in, quote-unquote, the mess, which is why they didn't come down and pit him in. Josh, I love Phil Parsons giving Derek Krause a shout. decision makers that matter. Matt Crafton's a name we know three time champion charging inside the top five trying to get the fourth position away from Christian Eckes in that 19 truck. He does it. It's amazing. We see Enfinger making so much ground up on the very outside of the racetrack and Matt Crafton is right around the curb. He's going to try it again now a little bit of crossover by Eckes got that spot back for the moment. Every position is a point that's enormous for these playoff drivers to try to advance from the opening round to the round of eight. Carson Hosevar leading Grant Infinger. It's down under a half a second. The advantage for the 42 is we hit our craftsman 20 to go at Milwaukee. Three time winner this season Carson Hosevar two time winner Grant Infinger in a great battle. Either one of these drivers wins they go to the round of eight. They know they're going to see Ty Majeski. Here's this battle. Won't go away. Crafton around Kraus. Eckes got that third spot away from Kraus. Now Crafton grabs fourth. This has got to make Matt Crafton so happy being able to get up there and run in the top five. Battle for this win. Running a different line completely than everybody else, which kind of reminds me of Matt Crafton. He likes to be an innovator. We've seen him do that. We see carry to the win at Eldora one time running a different line that everyone else is running. I go back to that regular season finale when Hosevar came down that cycle of green flag pit stops got the tires and he was trying to run down Ty Majeski that night. He was an offense today. He's playing defense trying to hold off Grant Enfinger who came down at lap 137 and he is on those fresher tires and you see the points in the pylon. What a difference it makes to be out front here today. Right now, Hosevar in a good position and just trying to hang on to advance. Inside of 20 to go, as you said, Adam, Craftsman 20 to go. Things are going to get tight here for this win. I know that Harps, I don't see Hosevar giving up that tie side. He knows how strong the 23 is up there. I agree with you, Michael. I think if I'm Hosevar, I'm going to make him beat me on the bottom of the racetrack. He is so fast is that 23 truck. You think a dive bomb and a slide job might be heading our way. I think without a doubt that's a possibility. If he even needs to do that look at that run through the center of the corner. Here comes Grant in finger. Inside of Carson Hosevar 16 laps to go. Can he finish the deal and turns one and two. Yes he can and he goes wide Hosevar is back. Too much of a slide job. Got in there too hard. It's going to lose. Oh, and he still stays side by side. You got to like his commitment. <laughs> oh, there's oh. going to be contact. 
There was contact. Enfinger saves it, though. What a great save by Enfinger. Hosevar did the same. But it nets out 23 back on top. 15 to go. Grant Enfinger, your leader again at Milwaukee. Watch this left rear contact from Hosevar. Up the road goes Grant. Hangs on to it and takes the lead. I think Hosabar really thought Grant would run that third lane like he'd been doing, and Grant said, no, I'm going to go through the middle in the second lane. That's why they made contact, but a great save by Enfinger. Both drivers have been outstanding today, combining to lead over 120 laps. And I thought once Enfinger got by, he'd start to pull away, but Hosabar is hanging in tough. Grant may have just backed it down a little bit to try to save a little bit of tire in case he needs it, in case we get a late caution flag for yeah. a restart. Hosevar certainly giving him all he's got. Maybe he's found a little bit of a different line. 13 to go for Enfinger. See left side of your screen, top five all populated by playoff drivers. <laughs> Man, Grant. Grant's hanging on. There's Nick Sanchez. We saw him in that crash. He's rallied. He's been able to stay on the lead lap, pass a couple of trucks. He's in the 24th position. Just an update on one of our playoff racers. Right now, as they run, three points above the cut line for Sanchez. Thank goodness he got all those stage points today. Chase Purdy. Battling with Tom Majeski. What a day it's been for Majeski. He's running in seventh. Purdy's trying to grab that spot. Look at that handful of wheel he's got there. Driving that baby. Chase has really done a nice job. Really a nice job all year long. Had her up, runner up finish earlier this year for his career best. First season, Kyle Busch Motorsports. Have a good year. Oh, can he hold her down? Keep it down. Nice job staying off that side of Majeski. That's when Majeski's got his side. Do I give this cat a little bit extra room? He looks pretty determined. Oh. Ooh. No. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to continue the battle. These two race for seventh, 10 laps to go for our leader, Grant Enfinger. Started on the pole today, led every lap one, stage one. Lost the lead in a pit exchange, came from behind one, stage two. Various strategies have played out here in this final stage, but Grant Enfinger serving notice just how good he is. Got the lead back inside of 20 to go, and he's in charge with what would be nine laps remaining. How about this statement race for Matt Crafton? Don't count me out. Remember poking the old Phil? <laughs> I, I, do, I was going to try to get there before you did. Yes, I do remember that. We said Poco maybe. We thought maybe he could just advance into playoffs. He did just that, and like you said, what a great way to put it. A statement race. Don't count the old cat out yet. Top tens the last two races for Crafton. Right now running fifth, trying to grab that fourth spot from Corey Heim. Meanwhile, Enfinger's opened up about a second lead over Hosevar. Yeah, tenth better each of the last couple of three laps. You can see Hosevar way up the track, just trying anything he can to find a groove that will work for him to close in on our leader. I have to believe that the decision to run that Arkham Menards race earlier today by Grant Enfinger has paid huge dividends for him. How about the big news this week? GMS announces 2023 will be their last in the Craftsman Truck Series. You wonder what that would do to upset the apple cart, maybe take away the momentum. Enfinger told us today during qualifying, we're not backing down. They won the pole, and we are seeing in this race just how determined he and this race team are. Not much of a letdown here for this bunch, is there? When he comes around this time, it'll be 90 laps out front and only six to go to his third win of 2023. And what a way to go out if he could 
grab that championship for Maury Gallagher and GMS Racing in their final year in the Truck Series. Meant so much to the series here over the last 10 years or so. We two, know two driver championships, and we know Grant Enfinger will be back in the trucks next year. He'll get a quality ride. We know Jeff Hensley, his crew chief, will be back in the truck series. One of the very best we've had here in the series. You want to have a, you want to smile. Just go talk to him about a race car, a race vehicle, a truck. It doesn't matter. That man right there knows every inch of not only that truck, but the strategy, the tracks. He, he's just been there and done that. What a wonderful crew chief is Jeff Hensley. He was a former driver as well. He and I both started running late model sportsmen at the same time. He went on to decide to give up the steering wheel and grab the wrenches and be a crew chief for a number of years. We talked about who was here the last time the trucks raced in Milwaukee 2009. He was he, here. He was here. Yes, yeah. he was. Four to go for his driver, Grant Enfinger. Right now, all he's thinking is, please don't, please don't spin somebody out. Mm, look at this, three wide. Are you kidding me? Purdy, Krause, Majeski. Battle for sixth right there, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Purdy has it for the moment. Looks like he's going to be able to, is he going to clear Majeski? No. Oh. How do they battle like that without wrecking one another? That was so close. I wouldn't tell Grant Enfinger about this. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, Jeff Hensley is watching this. <laughs> yes, there it is. <laughs> Squeezed up nicely. Great job, Chase Purdy, to grab that sixth spot. Three remaining. Great work by our camera folks catching this great battle. Grant Enfinger put a bit of second and a half over Carson Hosevar. He's on cruise control. He just wants, wants to make it one more time back around and see that white flag. I was just going to say that. You want to <laughs> get to the white because you know then the next caution ends the race. Next flag would end it, whether it be the caution or the checkers. He's going to hold his breath for about five more seconds till he sees that white flag. Some lap traffic in front of him. That won't matter. White flag is out. One to go for Grant Infinger at Milwaukee. Christian Eckes is right on the tailgate of Carson Hosevar in that battle for second right behind this leader. Now right. it's separated a little bit now. There's that battle, but watch the momentum. Eckes gets off the corner, closes right up toward the back of the 42 truck. What a day for Grant Infinger. Wins the pole, wins both stages. Going to lead 96 laps. He hits him right between the eyes. Gets his third win of the year. Grant Infinger delivers at Milwaukee. Hosevar gets second. Third for Eckes. Corey Heim led laps, finishes fourth. And quite the day for Matt Crafton. Top five for the three-time champion. What a performance by this champion team. And their championship hopes stay alive. Winning today locks Grant Infinger in to the round of eight. Both he and Majeski locked in will move on. We're hearing that Corey Heim also has clinched a spot. And Christian Eckes. So we already have four of our round of eight drivers already locked in. Matt Crafton made a climb from out of the basement up into contention to put himself in a position to transfer into our next round. Kosovar second, now plus 56 in a really good position, plus 29 for Zane Smith, although he did not have a great day, very comfortable as we go to the race that will end this round. Kansas happens in 12 days. What do you think we take care of this truck and don't do too crazy of a burnout? Could this be our Phoenix I, truck? I, I'd love to think we would run into Phoenix. <laughs> ten wins for Grant Enfinger in his career. They've come at ten different racetracks. Add Milwaukee to the list. He got it done today. Grant Enfinger is a Milwaukee man. Dominating performance. 
this afternoon. He wins the Clean Harbors 175 at the Milwaukee Mile. Third win of 2023 and the tenth of his career. And he's going to the round of eight. Down to Josh Sims. Grant Enfinger, a dominant performance here at the Milwaukee Mile. Leads 96 laps, sweeps the stages. Even when he lost the lead off of pit road, still able to come back and retake the lead. Grant, when we talked earlier today, you found out about the news GMS shutting down at the end of the year. You said the goal is to prove you guys aren't done. Proved it out there today. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to hear anybody ask if, if we're going to lay down again. So, um, you know, Jeff Hensley's been focused the whole year. There's been distractions going on all year long. Um, so if anything, this adds clarity. None of these guys, including me, have a job next year. But I feel like we proved we, did, we deserve one. So uh, it's a, it's a, we had a heck of a champion power equipment Chevy. I don't think we were that good yesterday. I think we were a fifth place truck, maybe, maybe seventh, eighth place truck. But Jeff, he believes in me and what I tell him what I need, and I believe in him and, and the calls he makes. So we had a winning truck today. We I don't know if we had a dominant truck, but we had a winning truck. And um, yeah, I got by, put behind the eight ball there at the, at the end. But uh, that was, I don't know, it, it was fun racing. I hope the fans enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, this, one, this one is special for a lot of reasons. Obviously, the news this week. Um, but I want to say a big thank you to, to Maury Gallagher, Spencer, Ron Booth, Mike Beam, everybody that's built GMS Racing, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Um, also special, my spotter, Jeremy Lundy. Uh, my normal spotter, Tyler, couldn't make it, but my late model buddy, best best friends forever. He's, he's spotted for me. He's always been there for me when I needed him. I called him on Monday, and he, and he came here, so that it's even more special. And I know you talk about how special it is. I also know it's one of your crew members' birthdays, and he told me earlier today he everybody. that that's he great. was going to celebrate. Shout out to Greg, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Can you put into words what kind of statement this makes for you guys, though, as well? I, I think we've we've had speed. You know, if we executed perfectly, no. Did we execute perfectly today? No. But we've had speed all year long. When we've hit it, when that guy's hit it, we've uh, we've done this twice now this year here in Kansas. So we we've, we've got three wins, but we've had three trucks like this, in my opinion. So this is a brand new truck. Um, I can't say thank you enough for, for GMS Fabrication, GMS Racing, not just this year and not just lately, but the whole year last year. There was just as much effort put into this stuff, and um, I'm glad some of our fruits are showing. Grant Enfinger, your winner at the Milwaukee Mile. Amanda? Well, Carson Hosevar said off camera that being the runner up is a bummer until you look at that point sheet. And when you take a look at it as we head into the third playoff race of this season, what's it going to tell you? Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, if we have a bad day or something happens, you know, freak deal, um, you know, just confidence of us, you know, plus 56. I mean, it'd be hard to choke that one away. But uh, our 42 Chevy was really fast. You know, we'll ride express. Everybody worked hard. And I mean, we were on 11 lap old tires and, and we're able to hold up there. And I was finding lines. I was driving it like a dirt car, sliding myself, running the top. Um, you know, I don't know how good the fans loved it or how good to race them. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun just being able to move around. And um, when I didn't think we were going to be able to. So um, just kind of a bummer to run second. Uh, I haven't done this in quite a while. You know, luckily, we've been fortunate enough to win some races. So um, just close. You mentioned the tires. You also led 40 laps of this race. Grant Infinger able to make it around you on fresher tires. Was the nudge intentional? Uh, no, I was just trying to get in really hard. Um, you know, we're racing and, um, you know, we're good buddies and, um, you know, just I didn't mean to get into him. It was, was pretty close. I'm really thankful he uh, he didn't spin or I didn't spin, but, uh, you know, I just tried, tried to get in deep and uh, that black stuff's pretty slick. But, you know, it's just really fun, really enjoyable that uh, 98 finally got their superpower taken away and now we can all race again. Carson Hosevar, the runner up here at the Milwaukee Mile. He's been rolling top five, eight of the last 10 races and in a really good position. When you look at the remaining tracks as we head toward a run to a championship, we update the leaderboard. Here's how things look. Kansas up next in 12 days. It's going to be fun, Adam. You know, we talk about the mile and a half and the way Kansas races. You can really, really make some daring moves there. And, have a truck that you can run right out next to the outside wall or do like Matt Crafton did today and dive to the bottom. Matt made a great statement, as Phil said. He's in shape to be able to transfer and move on. Ben Rose and Matt Benedetto got a little work to do. Yeah, Zane Smith's looking pretty good, plus 29. But uh, you never know one of those guys below that line when, and that moves that cut line.
and Grant said it, last time we went there, it was in Finger in Victory Lane. Could we be looking at a little back-to-back -back for the 23? He got it done this afternoon. Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is coming to the biggest season opener college football has seen in years as his Colorado Buffaloes face 17th-ranked TCU. Big noon Saturday on Fox starts this coming Saturday. It's six days away. College football is back on the Fox family of networks. Grant Infinger celebrating. He has won the Clean Harbors 175. Great day for another veteran, Matt Kraft and Amanda. And it was this team that told him, you are the man. Let this truck come to you. When you look at the struggles that you guys had starting yesterday, could you have predicted this as the outcome? Oh, heck no. Uh, that, at the end of the day, I mean, just worked their butt off. Uh, yesterday, man, it was honestly the loosest truck I ever drove in my life, I think, yesterday. And we could not do anything to, to make it better. I mean, we tried something yesterday. And, I mean, we went out in and, and right field and tried something, and it didn't work. And we tried to take as much out of it as we could. Uh, well, we had that 50-minute practice session, didn't get it all, so we went back to close to our baseline where we've been running here lately with Jared and everybody. But uh, like I said, I can't thank these guys enough. They, I mean, they changed sway bars, changed shocks, changed springs. I mean, after practice, and at the end of the day, they, they still believe in the old man. Some of you got some of them that are haters. You know, you well, for Ty Majeski, his crew chief was ejected. He lost a tire today. He had to start from the back, and he had a drive-through penalty that almost you executed perfectly. This will be recorded as a top-10 finish for you, Ty. Is this a win for the team today? I don't know. We would have liked to have mixed it up. I felt like, you know, we could have overcame uh, the initial penalty. Two pit stops in a row. We just could never get over that hump. I don't know that we had a winning truck today, but it was decent, at least uh, decent enough to, to mix it up. But uh, never, like I said, got over that hump to do that. But thank you to Road Ranger, Soda Sense, uh, Cincinnati, Curb Records, everybody that puts an effort in. We have a really good season going right now, a lot of momentum. Um, today's bittersweet. I uh, would have liked to be in Victor Lane here at uh, my home state race, but uh, we'll go to Kansas and uh, try and bid, build some momentum before Bristol. And as he said earlier in the race, Adam, he is locked for the next round. No doubt about it. Daniel Dye got Grant Infinger after he won the pole, so he <laughs> wins the race. It's Raja's turn, right? His other teammate, watch. Uh, there you go. <laughs> a little cold water on, on what's been somewhat of a, a cool afternoon here in Milwaukee. Well, we're uh, looking forward to what's coming up here two weeks' time, Friday afternoon, September 8th. we got qualifying for you on FS1. Our coverage begins Friday night, elimination race from the Heartland, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And after that night is done, we'll know the eight drivers still alive for the championship in 2023. Great to be back at the Milwaukee Mile, an entertaining afternoon. And it all ends with Grant Enfinger claiming his third checkered flag of the year. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great Sunday evening, everybody.